Hello everybody, I'm Mannequin. Welcome to the stream. How's everyone doing today? Let's see who's here. Cassie says yo, hello Cassie. Bowser says ah, ah. <clears throat> How's it going Bowser? As says good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. Indeed. It... It is a Friday. Do you guys have the day off? Wait, no. Many of you guys are students, which means you're still on winter break. Lucky you guys. I only get today off. <laughs> Randy. Hello, Randy. Um, how's everyone doing today? Oh, I am uh, just chilling. Did more cleaning. I cleaned the entire kitchen, which is actually not that big of an area. But still, I cleaned the kitchen, and it's like freaking freaking like clean and like shiny and i'm gonna put all my um olive oil and my honey back and then after that it's gonna be like oh i i feel like so freaking good like this entire week all i have done is clean and it's like i feel so much more organized i feel so much more ready to take on life and that's weird that's weird it's weird but you know it's great um as in student int yeah me too <laughs> at least you get the day off Am I chillin', Mana, or am I Bing chillin'? I'm, I'm Bing chillin'. <laughs> yeah, tonight I'm gonna buy some toilet bowl cleaner and do the dreaded bathroom, and then after that I'm gonna be done. I'm gonna be done with cleaning. It's like, I'm so freaking excited. I do have a little bit of a mess over here, but that's gonna get organized once I some of my Amazon packages come. Uh, Phoenix Wright moment. <laughs> Cleaning the toilet. Oh, uh, that's that's pretty much me. I'm Phoenix Ken. I guys, I told you guys. Anyway, you guys want to play some Phoenix, right? Let's play some Phoenix, right? You know, I didn't have lunch today, so chances are, um, we when during the break, we're gonna have a snack break, which I know you guys love for some reason. But I'll tell you guys some fun stories. There's Phoenix. Ugh. Come on, Phoenix. Let's go. Oh, I didn't plug in my headphones. Alright, we're gonna have a sip of coffee because this is a certified cadeau moment. Ah. Uh, let me set up my um, tracking. Sorry about that, guys. I, I need to like, you know, track it just to make sure my stream looks okay. Come on. Come on, you idiot. There we go. All right. Do you guys remember where we were? We are about to go to the second trial. Wait. Hmm. Did I forget to save? No, I definitely saved, right? Ah, uh, whatever. <clears throat> uh. <gasps> Good morning, Mr. Wright! Good morning, Maggie! Yeah, I definitely saved. Um. So what do you think is gonna happen today, sir? Yesterday's session didn't go so well. It ended on a giant mystery. That's true, Shabra. We still haven't solved a single part of it yet. Are you okay, Nick? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. Of course, you look like what Pearl looks like when she's trying to spell. I saw that! That little flash of doubt in your eyes! No, no, uh, that wasn't doubt, that was, uh, determination. H H Ami is spelled A... I... No, no, that's not right! Why don't I believe you? It's nearly time, Maggie. You better get going to the defendant seat. That's the best seat in the house. Why do the defendants always get the good seat? Roger, don't let me down, Mr. Wright. I'm counting on you. Hey, pal! Hey, detective. Do we still have that weenie lunchbox? We still do. Quit stressing Maggie out. She doesn't need that. How'd you know she was stressed? I was watching through the doorway. Oh. You look like you lost the case already. Show a bit of confidence, pal. 
Yeah, maybe this will help. Huh? Have you taken up aromatherapy too? Not in a million years, pal. You think I can afford lavender essence? <laughs> it does make my bath smell really good, though. Uh, don't tell me you don't remember this thing. Come to think of it, it doesn't look like one of those aromatherapy bottles. Just a small bottle that turned up in Trey Ben's kitchen a couple days ago. Little bottles! Stealing! My life's goals! We finally got the analysis results back from the lab. So, what is it? Is it poison? I'm afraid not, pal. It's, uh, medication. Hey, I knew it! The little bottle was his ear med egg medication. Yeah, uh, for years. Topical use only, apparently. But then, why did Armstrong steal it? That's actually a big question. Why did he steal the aromatherapy bottle? For ears. You mean... Yeah. It's the medication Glenn Elg was using for his ruptured eardrum. What's Glenn Elg's ear medicine doing in the kitchen? Wait, wait. What about the unidentified fingerprints? Anything on that? Uh, someone screwed up, so they only had time to reanalyze the contents of the bottle. Another hour, they might have gotten something on the prints, pal, but... <sighs> it's gonna weaken the impact of this piece of evidence. Dang it! Who the hell screwed up? <sighs> it was probably Edgeworth. He's like, I know we could finish analyzing this piece of evidence, but I enjoy watching Phoenix Wright squirm. Charlie, go take a break. Uh, yes, sir! <laughs> okay, pal, this is it. Make sure your defense is impregnable today. Got it? Don't get anyone pregnant. I'm gonna expose that guy for what he's done. Or my name isn't Phoenix Wright! Which is funny, because that guy's name is Phoenix Wright. Hey, starting punctual as always. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Chabra. Ready and waiting as always, Your Honor. Very good. Then we'll get underway at once. Yesterday we heard the testimony of Mr. Victor Kudo. One day they're going to start at like 9.59 and people are just going to be so pissed. <laughs> He claims to have witnessed the defendant putting in a powder into the victim's coffee. However, the witness's testimony was plagued with a number of problems. By the way, this is why um, um, when people are asked to identify the witness uh, or identify the person, um, they before that they ask, is it possible that this was biased in any way or in any form? Because chances are, if you're in a murder case, what you're going to do is you're going to say the defendant did it because... Well, that's just what you would normally say. So, in the case of Victor Kudo, chances are he was biased just by the, um, the court proceeding. So, that's why it's standard to ask, it was, is it possible that the media or the court proceeding has biased your opinion or your answer in any way? The mark on the rim of the cup shows that the victim drank with his right hand. But according to the old man's testimony, he picked it up with his left hand. Thank you, Mr. Godot. Furthermore, according to the witness's account, the victim was listening to the radio with an earpiece in his left ear. Yet, the victim's left eardrum was ruptured, which made him effectively deaf in that ear. It's amazing how many contradictions a single case can have, huh, Nick? Uh, allow me to enlighten you, Your Honor. The world, you see, keeps turning, and we must turn with it. You've lost me already, Mr. Godot! Don't let the mysteries of yesterday mystify you today. Only losers think like that. You've got to change with the times. That's one of my rules. 
Are you implying you've resolved these contradictions? You know the answers to these riddles? The old guy wasn't just throwing seed in here. He was throwing us off the scent. And today, I'll prove it. Very well, let the first witness take the stand. Oh no. We already know this witness is tainted. He works with, um, he works with, um, Tiger. And you are? Oh, bonjour, everyone! I am John Armstrong, the owner and the head chef of Le Très Bien Restaurant. Enchanté! Forgive me for asking, witness, but... Are you a woman? Oh la la, monsieur. As you can see, I am la pert and perky gentleman. No. On the day of the incident, you were in Trey Bien's kitchen. Isn't that right? Oui, monsieur, monsieur. Everything feels right. Huh. Wow, he's totally unfazed. Doesn't anything intimidate this guy? Especially somewhat questionable androgynous French chefs. Very well, your testimony. Please tell the court what happened at Trey Beans. We volunteers. When it all happened, there was the two customers in the restaurant. I remember I was experimenting with some new art deco that day. Like having a large mirror between the tables, for example. Oui, perhaps that is what la old man was looking at. Seriously? He's gonna say, oh yeah, he saw it in a mirror. Hey, Dumball. Hello, Kiyama. La cup, la earpiece, and la glasses. Eh, he would have seen everything in reverse, no? Mirror! Um, we already know that's wrong. Because, um, maybe the earpiece and the cup would be reversed, but then the glasses would also be reversed. But he said he wore an HD HMD on his left eye, left eye, and he picked up the cup with his same, with his left hand. Right? You guys remember that? Which means the glasses would also be, you know, backwards. The HDMI. Yes, the HDMI. So we already know that's wrong. When the incident occurred, I broke my vase on the seat. I'm sorry. Wow, Victor. We own grand mirror, la most enormous mirror. And suddenly, the mystery disappears. Just like this coffee. Mm. This certified Godot moment was brought to you by Coffee Radio. Coffee Radio for the beans. Hey, how's it going, Dumball? Um, Dumball says, want to say sorry for not coming? Hey, don't worry. I completely understand you have a lot of work. And, I mean, uh, yeah, just come by whenever you have time and just enjoy the stream and hang out with us. Thanks so much for coming, Dumball. Oh, by the way, um, Dumball, um, the Pokemon has helped me win a few competitive battles. Uh, what? <laughs> like I said, the world keeps turning, so roll with it. Mmm, that would explain the coffee cup and the earpiece conundrum. The mirror would have made everything appear back to front. What the heck? This is way too early in the morning for this to be happening to me. <coughs> How's it going, JD? Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Uh, Kiyoma, you being late, no excuse. I'm throwing out Quaxley. He's 
Quaxley's not allowed to live in this apartment anymore. <laughs> How's it going, JD? You're late again. I'll let it slide this time. Okay, there were just two customers. I remember you were experimenting with some art deco, like having large mirror. How big of a mirror are we talking here? Oh, something about four meters wide and uh, uh, two meters high. Let's see. If one meter is about a holy glass in a frame, that's huge. I was intending to install it on the ceiling eventually. The ceiling? Is there a mirror in the ceiling? I don't remember. My no, but I decided not to go through with it in here. Uh, press! Press! If you really had such a large mirror in the restaurant, someone would have noticed it. But there's nothing about the mirror in Mr. Kudo or Maggie Bird's testimonies. But, 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 but... You didn't ask, Trey. You only have yourself to blame for such sloppy work. What?! the clown court. This is a circus. This is a circus. This is a freaking circus. A mirror was delivered to Trey Bien the day before the incident. Wait, really? As Mr. Armstrong testified, he was carrying out some design changes. As it turns out, he didn't actually use the mirror in the end. This doesn't add up. Even if a mirror was delivered to Trey Bien, it doesn't prove it was in the restaurant on the day of the crime. Uh, if you want to doubt someone, Trey, look in the mirror. Oh my god, he's so dreamy. He used the mirror as an insult along with a prop. Uh, Maya, keep your pants on! Uh, don't tell him about the times you were late. Hmm. You, per you think, you act like I don't know us. Um, I'm sure the person will be looking back at you will be devious enough. So the witness yesterday had seen the victim reflected in a mirror. How? How? Perhaps this is what the old man- How? How? Wait, don't we have a, uh, what is the floor plan, right? We have a floor plan? Where? Where was the mirror? Can some- Can you point it out in this specific map? What the frick? Where was the old man sitting? Where was he supposed to be sitting? Normally, I'd expect people to know the difference between a reflection and a real object. Objection. Normally. How does normality come into this? That's lame, Trey. Even for you. Are you trying to say that if something isn't normal, it isn't possible, that is? Where does that leave the porky-headed lawyer and the top-knot chick over there? And the ungodly cool guy with the mask over here. Will try. Not the hair! I don't have a top knot! Mr. Godot is correct! It's a very nice top knot, though. Thank you, Judge. Lack of normality is no basis for discounting an argument. Bien, logic is once a day. Everything. He would have seen everything in reverse? We? Oui? Hey, Nick. We should take a sec and think about what old CD said in his testimony. How do you phrase it again? Um, so boy! Oh, oh, frick, I have to do his voice. Um... Victor Kudo! Ah, the boy was wearing an earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs! No question! You can lock me up if I'm wrong! How's it going, Ari? Then he used the same hand to pick up the coffee! He saw everything described reflected in the mirror. Then everything he said on the left was actually on the right, huh? That clears up all the problems in this testimony. Or does it? Uh, it's kind of hard to believe that everything's the fault of a mirror. You think old CD saw everything in the reflection? If he did, it would explain all the contradictions. But that just makes the situation worse! There's got to be something in the old man's testimony. We've just got to dig deeper. All right. Objection. 
the coffee cup, the earpiece, and the HMD. Let's think back over Mr. Kudo's testimony for a second, shall we? You already saw this flashback! Stop wasting my time! So to sum- uh, so to summarize, we were told that both the HMD and the earpiece were on the victim's left side. Now, if Mr. Kudo saw it all as a reflection in the mirror, it means the HMD and the earpiece were actually on the right side! Exactement, you see, monsieur. Now that you think about it, it is not so odd, no? Unfortunately, it's very hard right now. Uh, I, I was thinking about Edgeworth. Uh, unfortunately, this is where we run into a monumental contradiction with the facts. If Mr. Kudo really did see everything in a mirror, why is the HMD now on the wrong side of his head? What up? Mr. Wright's correct. If the witness genuinely observed the victim reflected in a mirror, then he would expect the victim's earpiece to be on his right eye. <laughs> How bitter. Trite, you should have a taste of this bitterness. It'll calm you down in no time. Are we talking about your coffee or you? You don't understand the way the witness thinks. How he thinks? You remember this, I presume. The, I broke the vase sorry apology. I, I, I mean, uh, Mr. Kudo's testimony. Exactly. The old man has one very grievous habit, other than throwing seeds. The more of an impression something makes, the more muddled it make, his mind makes it. And what's the most striking thing about Mr. L? Clearly the victim's eyepiece. That's my point. The old man strikes again. Oh. I saw the earpiece and the new fangled spectacles he was wearing. Oh yes, they were both on the left ear. You hear the left ear. Ah, well, Trey. Ugh, that's the worst but best impression of Kudo ever. Wow, I really thought he was old CD for a moment. Godot's good. So good. Enough, young lady. Stop simping over the robot man. And I must agree that yesterday's witness was irresponsibly rash in much of his testimony. Bad luck, Nick. Looks like the boil of a contradiction you just found is a rash. What? Maya, did you make a really bad pun? Maya, am I going to have to yeet you back into jail? A mirror can't be beaten by a handful of seeds, nor can it lie. So, what exactly was the old man looking at? Fill us in, Mr. Armstrong. Go on, tell the court. We're all ears. Oui, I can explain. Please, if you look at the plans of Leonard Strong. Hello, is everyone sitting comfortably? Lamir, it was on the middle of the restaurant dividing the two halves. There is only one seat from which you could have seen an image of Le Victor. That was a seat at the table next to Le Victor. Uh, that was where the old man was sitting. After a terrible incident occurred, I moved my mirror so it was not in the way. Ah, uh, dang it! I was about to just immediately bring up the fact that there was a crime photo here, but, you know, you can argue that he just moved it out of the way. Dang it! Wait, the victim was sitting over here, right? Wait! But the vase! He smashed his vase! But naturally, I did not touch anything else. I see. No problems we have with the explanation we just heard. From the victim's table next to- from the table next to the victims, Mr. Kudo could have seen the victim in the mirror. What a naughty little croquet I am. Confusing all the men like this all the time. Oh, oh, they're so confused. 
they think they like the little women, but they see me and they like the big women. Oh, what? What? Don't worry about it. We can keep up. Except for the guy breaking out in a cold sweat over there again. I HATE THIS GUY! You said- Oh, you said you didn't touch anything else apart from the mirror. Are you quite sure? Volunteers, of course. Very well, Mr. Wright. Cross-examination. Alright, we got this one, right? I studied for the exam. Uh, there was only- That was where the seat next to the victim- after the terrible incident. Here. That was where the old man was sitting at. Um, that is actually completely wrong. And I will demonstrate that with a picture right here. Objection! This piece of evidence contradicts the testimony we've heard, Your Honor. The crime photo? Yes, this photo clearly shows something that should theoretically not exist. What on earth do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? Should not exist. Sounds like you're describing yourself, Trite. Oh! Oh, Gado! Gado, chill out! Gado, this court is for... This court is for solving murders, not causing them! God damn! How's it going, BK? What is something that should not exist? I think it's pretty obvious what shouldn't exist in this picture. The vase? What possible connection does this have with the witness's testimony? Your Honor, I'm telling you that there should have been no vase on this table because it very clearly contradicts this piece of evidence. There was one thing that was clearly demonstrated by yesterday's testimony. Mr. Kudo broke the vase that was on the table where he was sitting. And yet, as the court can see, there is an unbroken vase on the table next to the victim. Why? Because Mr. Kudo was not in fact sitting at the table next to the victim at all. Objection. Don't be an idiot, Trite. That's impossible. The seat's the only one Kudo could have seen the victim's reflection from. Exactly. There's only one conclusion we can draw from this. There was no mirror on the at Trapien on that day. Your testimony, Mr. Armstrong, is an elaborate lie. I'm all Don't try to confuse the court, right? Obviously, the witness cleared up the vase while the police were taking their time to get to the crime scene. He just said he didn't touch anything else. Unfortunately, Mr. Godot, that doesn't quite work for me. Mr. Armstrong already testified to the contrary, in his own words. I did not touch anything else except the mirror. Ah, coffee! Well, witness, what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> The mean man is bullying me. Oh, but don't worry. This petite little girl loves to be bullied by big strong men. Oh, oh big strong Phoenix right? Oh, so I keep the bully to me. Oh, oh, oh. I was right. There was no mirror in the restaurant that day. In light of this revelation, we return back to the original problem. Why did the victim have an earpiece in an ear which he couldn't hear? Ah, uh, you only get one shot in life. There's no turning back. If you want to claim that the mirror wasn't there, trite, then this problem is all yours. How do you explain what the old man saw? If I can answer this, I'll be much closer to the truth. I feel it. I feel it in my bones. Are you going to be okay? You shouldn't feel things in your bones. There's no nerves in there. There's more than just one contradiction, Maya. What do you mean? 
Remember what Maggie told us? There was another man. And a sample CD. It all flies in the face of Mr. Kudo's testimony. And I think the reason why... And I think I know the reason why nothing in this case is adding up. Well, let's hear your answer. Yes, your honor. The reason behind the contradictions is... The victim was a phony! Ugh! This case is riddled with contradictions. Yet, there is one very simple answer that clears them all up. And? The incident Mr. Kudo witnessed and the incident the victim experienced were two completely different incidents! What? Yeah! The victim that Mr. Kudo saw wasn't Mr. Glenel get off. It was an imposter. Dum bum bum bum. A phony pretending to be Mr. L. Obviously, unlike the victim, there was nothing wrong with the imposter's left eardrum. That's how he ended up wearing the earpiece on his left by mistake. You made me waste my 15th cup. Hold up! Settle down or I'll clear the courtroom. Wyatt Gramps. Why don't you clear out of here, huh? What did you say? Right. Are you saying that what Mr. Kudo saw was a setup? Yeah. Someone pretended to be Glenn Elg and acted out the whole coffee poisoning. All for the express purpose of creating a witness out of one Mr. Victor Kudo. Get real, Trite. Why would anyone want to do that? Isn't it obvious? The thing Mr. Kudo was most insistent about in his testimony was... Uh, the serving girl brought him a java chino, but she put something in it. It was the serving girl! It's so hard to believe. What? There was one and only reason to show Mr. Kudo this fake poisoning. To show Maggie Byrne in the act of poisoning the coffee. Are you insinuating that the waitress in the old man's story was a fake as well? It's true there were no other customers in the restaurant at the time, but... It's also true that the chef was there. He would have noticed what was happening. That's right! Well, witness! Okay, now we break down the chef and demonstrate that he's not a reliable witness. If your restaurant really was the scene of such theatrics, you would have known about it. Oh, oh la la, this is most difficult for me. No, it's quite simple. All you have to do is testify. You are under oath after all. Was there, in fact, a phony at Trey Bien that day. The defense demands that Mr. Armstrong tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth about what happened. Mr. Wright, that is an American justice system thing. We live in Japanifornia. And what are the laws in Japanifornia? Nothing. That's why this court is so clowny. You will accurately explain in detail the events of the restaurant. Oh, wee, wee, wee. La victim, Monsieur L came to my restaurant alone. I remember the old man arrived not long after him. There were no other customers. When he got word that he won the lottery, Mon L is very excited. It was approximately five minutes later that the poisoning incident occurred. No, no, no. There was no time for the pony to do the acting. Just so we're clear, there was no mirror in the restaurant after all. Je vous aimez, pardon. Forgive me, your honor. I lie because I want this mess to be cleared up quickly. What you have done is commit perjury, Mr. Armstrong. I'll decide how to punish you later. Oh, we... Oui. We oui, please, please punish me.
Punish me so hard. I like the big old man who have the hammer. Oh, ho, ho. Wee, wee, wee. So now, a cross-examination, Mr. Wright. He took that perjury charge a bit too well. But I'm guessing he'll be in more serious trouble after this contra uh, cross-examination. Okay, let's see how we solve him. Okay. The victim came to the restaurant alone. Fine. We don't have we don't have a way to prove that false. I remember an old man arrived not long after him. There were no other customers. When he won the lottery, it was approximately five minutes later that the poisoning incident occurred. There was no time for a phony to do law acting. Law acting. No other customers. Tell me about that. So your only customers were Mr. Kudo and the victim? How many times do you need to ask the same thing, Trite? Um, I suppose, yeah, objection asked and answered. <laughs> he got me. You'll never catch me drinking the same blend twice. Huh? You're trying to establish the presence of a phony victim in the restaurant. But you're wasting your time. You can't grind birdseed to make coffee if you catch my drift. But there's a hole in the testimony somewhere, I'm sure of it! I became very excited. It was f approximately five minutes later that the poisoning incident occurred. What occurred during those five minutes? And what were you doing at that point? Without any customers, you must have had time to kill. I am a multi-talented woman, monsieur. Sorry? What do you mean by that? There is the remote chef, Jean Armstrong, and the tragic poet, Clarice Armstrong. Cl Clarice? Oui. I was a writing the poem, an angry tale of a chef and half a million dollars of debt, cooking for a man who won half a million dollars on the lottery. It is called Pourquoi. It means why. Perhaps I could recite it for the court. Please don't. <laughs> there was no time for phonies to do an acting. You mean you contradict? You contacted the police as soon as the incident occurred? I asked the old man to call, to call from La Payphone. By your own argument, Trite. The purpose of the phony victim's performance was so the old man would see it. In other words, once the incident occurred, this opportunity would completely disappear. Bien, it seems a shadow of a doubt has been listed, lifted. Uh, ne sais pas. I guess Mr. Armstrong is connected to this case, huh? Absolutely. Someone was impersonating Mr. L, and I refuse to believe he was oblivious. He was there the whole time, after all. But, but... But if you're right, wouldn't Maggie have noticed too? She fell unconscious when the incident occurred, remember? Ah, you mean that's when the phony staged his act? We'll know for sure once I find a hole in the testimony. You're gonna be at a party? I hope you have a great time. Uh, let's ask him about the... Here. Uh, when was that? Did you see him? No, I was in the kitchen, but I heard him. I remember our shouting, yes, half a million bakus. Half a million bakus? Bak bak? I don't, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I have a very bad French accent. Presumably the defendant heard that too then, correct? Maggie? She looked like a poor little frightened duck. What about Mr. Kudo? That old man choked on some bird seed that got stuck in his throat. It seems we have yet another incident on our hands. It was approximately five minutes later the incident for poisoning occurred. There were no other customers. Was he alone at the table as well? My oui. I saw him from the kitchen. And yet the defendant, Miss Bird, remembers it differently. She swears there was another man at the victim's table. Ah, unfortunately for you, Trite, yesterday's witness also testified that the victim was alone. You know, Seeing you squirm like that reminds me of a certain coffee's bittersweet bite. What, 
kind of coffee has been you been drinking? It's not coffee. It's love. It's love that's bittersweet. I love you, Kito. Maya! Hearing Maya say that makes her seem wise all of a sudden. Oh, Maya! Stop, stop, stop drooling over Gado! Uh, how about this? He came alone, but what about checking his schedule? No? This evidence clearly contradicts! No, no, you're just stupid! Ha <laughs> ha! Idiot! Ha! Huh, everyone point and laugh at the idiot! Ha ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! I remember the old man arrived not long after him. There were no other customers. When he got the lottery... Oh, maybe it's... There were no other customers. Uh, when he got a lottery, he was very excited. Approximately five minutes. Let's, let's press everything first. By old man, you mean Victor, correct? We, he often comes for my special coffee. I drank your coffee once, Mr. Armstrong. It's special. I'll give you that. It's worth a sip just for the experience. Oh, you make me so happy, monsieur. You are most welcome anytime. I said it was worth one sip. And nothing more. So the old Kudo arrived at the restaurant around the same time as the victim. Maybe I should ask about his arrival in detail. Um... How many minutes after? What time is it? Out of curiosity, what time was it when Mr. Kudo arrived? Oh no, I cannot remember, monsieur. Hmm. I believe we were told by a witness yesterday. The crime was reported at 2.25 by my kind of kind of scary old man, sir. Does that perhaps jog your memory? Well, that incident happened 20 minutes after he arrived. So... The victim must have arrived between 2 and 2.10 or... No. Hmm. Just after 2. Thank you for your help, Jog, my memory, monsieur. You are wonderful! Ha ha ha! I can't sit here all the time and do nothing, can I? The time will be added to the witness's testimony. There we go. We, oui, monsieur judge, everything I do, I do for you. M Merci bien! That's French! Ha ha ha! <laughs> I'm a French man. Glad at least one person's here is in good mood. He's even humming a song to himself. Okay, we got it. Law just after two. But the lottery is at 1.30! I'm afraid I finally got you, Mr. Armstrong. Cool. What do you mean? At the time in question, the victim was listening to the radio with his earpiece. He was, the show he was listening to was Millionaire Radio. Each week, they announced the winning numbers of their half a million dollar lottery ticket. We, oui. that must be the show more. Elk was listening. I can't see any problem with this testimony, Mr. Wright. I wonder. You said the victim arrived at your restaurant after 2 p.m., correct? Oui, oui, I am sure of it, but I can re I remember perfectly now. It was that time because I had just finished serving the lunch menu. Get to the point, Trite, if you have one. That show is broadcast live at 1.30. And it claims to be the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life. It's on the air at... 1.30! Now, suppose the victim made some noise when it, had, when it was announced that he had won. And yet, I don't believe his cry of joy could have occurred after 2 p.m. Because the show had already finished more than 30 minutes earlier by that point! No! <gasps> the victim we've been told about has done nothing but the impossible. Listening to the radio in his ruptured eardrum, catching a show that was already over, there's only one conclusion you can draw from these facts. The victim was an imposter, acting out the poisoning 30 minutes after the real murder. Yes, there were two Glen Elks and Trey Bien that day. 
the real Glen Elk, now dead, having been poisoned by the real killer, and the phony Glen Elk acting out the events for Mr. Kudo! It certainly seems that way. I mean, if that wasn't the case, how can you explain the time discrepancy? Quite a performance, right? You're almost on a roll. But sadly, you lack the rock hard foundation of rhythm to build your song your to build your song. Don't worry. Oh, it's plenty rock hard. Uh, sorry, I'm thinking of Edgeworth again. What is this? Music Theory 101? Let's recap. According to your imaginative theory, it's just after 2 p.m. The phony elk is performing a play for the benefit of Mr. Kudo. How do you explain that? How do you how do you explain then where the real Glen Elk is? I don't believe I have to expel this out for the court. However, at the time, the real Glen Elk was already dead. That's certainly the obvious conclusion. Objection. Thank you, Trey. That's exactly what I was hoping you'd say. Now I presume you can prove this theory of yours. Can you explain where the missing corpse went to? The miss- <gasps> I- I got it! I got it! Do you guys- The victim's ear medicine was found in the kitchen, right? Here's the question, how did it end up there? At first, I initially thought that, um, um, that what's his name stole the medicine um the chef stole the medicine like he steals a whole bunch of things but why would he steal ear medicine it's like maybe he just steals whatever he sees that's shiny like a like a bird or something um but maybe there are other ways that the bottle could have ended up in the kitchen for example what if the body was moved to the kitchen and then this bottle fell out that would explain also why the small bottle was there with the aromatherapy instead of, you know, with his little, like, collection of knickknacks and trinkets. It was just randomly sitting near the aromatherapy bottles. Yes! 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 The chef moved the body! Glen Elk is just Glen Elk. That, that is true. <laughs> Glen Elk backwards is Glen Elk. Um, most people who die, win lottery die before the cash in. Is that true? Is that true? I mean, I don't doubt it. Um, you know, most people who win the lottery who actually cash in end up miserable too. So it's like the lottery, regardless of what you do with the lottery, it's not a good thing. And I know um, most people who get killed over the lottery get killed by family. I also know that statistic. According to the old man's testimony, there was only one other customer. If that customer was the phony Glen Elk. Where did the killer hide the body of the real victim? Nyarg? That's a new one. The prosecution has a valid point. If your theory is to stand up to examination by the court, you must provide us with proof by answering the prosecution's question. Where did the killer hide the body? Y yes your honor. No conjecture, Twight. Uh, trite. Let's hear some facts for once. Show the court a piece of evidence that proves where the body was hidden. Uh, uh. E evidence? I never learned about that in law school. What's with all the intense pressure here all of a sudden? Oh, it's almost as if Godot is pressing his body against- Maya! I thought I had him. But he turned it all around and backed me into a corner instead. Well, Mr. Wright, well, the court will now hear the defense's theory and evidence. First, where was the body of the real Mr. Elk concealed inside? It would have been... It would have been too dangerous to take the body outside. Obviously, the body must have been hid somewhere inside. Hmm, interesting. But where could a body have been hidden inside a restaurant? Perhaps you would care to point it out on these plans. Yes, your honor. The exact location is here. Glen Elk was going to be used for tomorrow's stew. The body was hidden here! Hmm, I see. Nice supposition. But the real question is, can you back it up? Where's the evidence that proves the body was hidden that location? 
Mr. Armstrong, do you recognize this bottle? No, 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 no. I have never seen that ugly bottle before in my life. I only use the very best bottles, monsieur. They like the highest quality for me only. Where was that bottle found, Mr. Wright? Interestingly enough, your honor, it was found in the kitchen of Trey Bien. Eh? Quoi? But I only ever use these bottles for my aromatherapy. But this bottle doesn't contain aromatherapy oil, Mr. Armstrong. No, it contains... medication. What kind of medication? I'm sure everyone remembers. That Mr. Elk visited an otolaryngological clinic and was given medication. <laughs> Hashtag, I am very smart. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. Otolaryngological clinic. <laughs> I was close. Smart moment. <laughs> you can't be serious. Uh, the defense had the contents analyzed. And I have the lab results here. The contents of the bottle match the prescription that was given to Mr. Elk. <laughs> Blore. Glenn Elk's murderer hid the body in the restaurant kitchen. At which time... This bottle fell out of the victim's pocket. Mr. Armstrong, when the incident occurred, didn't you say you were in the kitchen? You know what I'm about to say. It was you who hid the victim's body. You did a fine job pretending to defend my client, Maggie Bird. However, you were setting her up to take the fall behind the poor girl's back. No! Hold on! This is an extraordinary development. Witness! Did you murder Mr. Glen Allen? Never! I could not do such an horrible thing! No! T minus five for Godot launch. Uh, three, two, one. Houston, we have liftoff. The bitterness. Every time I get lied to, I always down a mug of coffee. That's... One of my rules. Do you have the slightest idea how many cups you've had by now? Then, I'd like to do the same to the person who lied to me. I'd like them to... I'd like to take them down with my empty cup. Listen up, chef. How about a brand new flavor in your ear, my H-deficient friend? please, you must help me out. It is a trap. Listen, listen to me. It is a trap, por favor. Por favor. You habla español, Mr. Armstrong, and por favor is Spanish. I'm gonna ask you once. Did you do it? No, 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 absolutely no. I simply, I simply. Let's hear it. You've got one shot. Right, Gramps? Witness, the court will permit you the chance to make one final statement. If you lie under oath, Mr. Godot's coffee mug awaits you. As does my gavel. Oui. It is clear. What do they always say in the movies? I got a bad feeling about this. 
Very well. Begin the final testimony, Mr. Armstrong. The Confession. How's it going, Ansu? It is true. I hear the body in the kitchen. The man forced me to do. I had no other choice. I had to go along with him because that was the reason why I could not refuse. But I did not kill him, I swear. You must believe me. I did not kill the man. <laughs> you were forced by who? I cannot say. Or I will be erased. Let's try a different question then. When Mr. Elk died, was he really the only person at his table? That was another man. Yeah! Come on! All right, we finally cleared up the testimony or the the story. I knew it. Maggie was telling the truth. You may cross-examine the witness, Mr. Wright. Just one more thing I need to do. I gotta break this guy. Specifically his kneecaps! No, not the kneecaps! I need to walk in the kitchen! No, Mr. Wright! No! <laughs> There was a reason why you couldn't refuse. And that reason would be, Mr. Armstrong? You know, monsieur. Yes. Surely you cannot expect a young maiden to talk about such an embarrassment. A maiden? You're a bit too old to get away with that. And a bit too male. <laughs> My, I love you. Uh, your weightiness sometimes just makes me crack. <laughs> I can't finish the cross-examination without establishing his reason. So I'll just do it with evidence. Where's his loan contract? There it is. You have half a million dollars in, of debt, don't you? Half a million? That's almost one million! Buy another half a million. We, oui, you can do math, Mr. Judge. I was weak, and I borrowed the money. I love the way how he bends over his back in the in the back portrait. It's kind of it's kind of like, oh I'm so feminine. <laughs> this is Mr. Armstrong's Achilles heel. And that's why you couldn't refuse anything asked. By this man. No. Why'd you do it, Gado? I can tell today has worn you out. You have my permission to go home, Mr. Wright. Excuse me? We, oui, you are tired. This oil is a mild blend of myrtle and lavender. Don't worry. He's the murderer! It was him! It was him! It was good though! We've got this covered. Covered? Like, I'm gonna leave it to you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Phoenix. I had to do it. <laughs> Half a million dollar loan from a black market loan shark. And you had no way of paying it back, did you? That's why you were forced to do anything this man told you! It is as you say. Mr. Armstrong! La Tiger! He told me he was going to use my restaurant for a business rendezvous! All the day in question, he was me tailor victim to the man that he repays long. You know, this is your chance just to tell him, tell the court that he is the murderer so they can arrest him and you can be, well, in theory, all the dealings are illegal, so. 
you die do you not have to pay him back how, how does the le how does the legality work in the black market that's a good question I don't know why it happened like that. I just did what he told me to. I had no choice. I carry the body in the inconsist inconscient. Inconscient? Inconscient? Unconscious? Inconscient. Inconscient. I have never heard that word before. And the inconscient Maggie out of the dining area. And into the kitchen. After that, I just tried to forget what I had seen. We can now safely say the man who forced your hand was Mr. Furio T. Gray. I have one further question for you the poison in the lottery ticket. Was that your doing as well? No, I know nothing about that. <laughs> Making it look like it was Maggie who had done it. I, I, I was not. It is despicable. Mr. Godot, you will summon Furio Tigre as a witness. I doubt that can be arranged for today, so we will adjourn for now. Proceeding, wow, another trial. Proceeding will, proceedings will continue tomorrow. Inconscient is another word for unconscious. Well, I learned some vocabulary today. Also, how's it going, Orpho? 30 minutes. What? The trial will go on. I'll see it to it myself. I need half an hour to get this guy in the stand. Not a minute more. How the- Don't sit back and relax yet, Trite. No one knows if that chef is really telling the truth. This trial could go either way. Very well. Your request is granted, Mr. Gundo. We will resume once Mr. Tigre is ready to take the stand. You think, um... You think Viola will be heartbroken after this and we can be her rebound guy? Because... I mean, I mean, sometimes I, sometimes I don't have a problem with being used. In fact, sometimes I like being used, if you know what I'm, 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 what? Until then, court is adjourned for a 30 minute recess. Yeah, to be continued. I feel like Viola is putting up a front to others about him betting his, about him being his lover or something. I mean, I think it's more like she's trying to convince everyone that she's in love with him so that they can take bets on who's going to win the trial. The, the mafia is totally betting on who's going to win the trial. <laughs> oh. Are we still half a million dollars for that um guilty tigre? He's he's not gonna be guilty, trust me on that one. Oh no no. Eh um Eh, you think he's gonna be found guilty? You're like, yeah, no way. I'll bet you a half a million dollars. Oh, I got you on that half a million. <laughs> <coughs> Don't worry, my daughter's got him under I, my got daughter's got him wrapped around her little finger. Oh, he's gonna be guilty. <laughs> <coughs> So we're finally gonna see the tiger! We've almost won this case now, Nick. I wish I could agree. When I crossed again, Mr. Armstrong now. He said he was just doing what the tiger told him. But Godot picked up on it, remember? He pointed out that without proof, we don't know if what he testified is the truth. What what how is that picking up on something? Mousehold is is in the mo in the mafia. Mousehold is the mafia. Also, for any uh, mouseholds out there, next time use Durex. It's um durable and great for love. Um. <clears throat> you mean, you think Mr. Armstrong was lying? I don't know. But if that's the line the prosecution takes, we could be in trouble. 
I get the feeling that we don't have the case-making evidence we're gonna need. <clears throat> hey, pal! Was that an ad? <laughs> this stream is sponsored by Durex Condoms. <laughs> Man, can you imagine if my very first sponsorship, like, could you imagine if my very first sponsorship ever was a condom company? I don't, I don't know if that would be a good thing or a bad thing. Hello, Alpuka, you came at the perfect time. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe. What are you so jumpy about, Detective? Your hair's standing on end. That's the pot calling the kettle black, little top knot. It's not a top knot! It's a medium bun. Never mind about the hair, just calm down, all right? I think it might be a little in tune with the... <laughs> with the stream. Uh, I, I can't stand when I don't have a job to do. I get kind of wound up. Ah! Okay. You gotta give me something to do, pal. Anything. Well, uh... Hey, I'm gonna take your jog back down to the precinct. I can get some prints analyzed if you've got an hour. An hour? The trial would have reconvened by then. But, but Nick, we still don't really have decisive evidence. True. Without some kind of trump card to pull out of the bag, we're really stuck. You said you can get some fingerprint analysis done in an hour. You bet. Uh, the bottle, probably. Yeah, I'm found covered in unidentified fingerprints. If you're going back out to the station, could you find out whose prints these are? Oh, hey, small bottle I gave back to you this morning. Yeah, I think it's time we solve the last mystery of who the prints belong to. It's your thing, pal. Actually, it's been gnawing at me too. Damn, what I wouldn't give to be gnawing at Maggie right now, though. Am I right, Gumshoe? Um, just, just, just make your lunchboxes. Okay, I'm getting to the lab. Make sure you don't lose the case before I get back. This is pretty much the final showdown. It's time to separate the phonies from the real guys. Why didn't Gumshoe get the bottle tested before? Um, actually, that is explained. Someone screwed up and didn't do the print analysis. Um, my headcanon is that, um, Edgeworth specifically called in to tell them not to do the print analysis, just to screw with right. Court will now reconvene! Mr. Godot, did you find Furio Tigre? I haven't tamed him for you. It was a three-cup job, no problem. Tamed him? The guy's name may be Furio Tigre, but come on! It's pretty lively. Be careful. He still bites. Ah, oh, what I wouldn't give to have Godot bite me- Maya! Very well. Please show Mr. Tigre to the stand. Yeah, Edgeworth still screws with Phoenix. And, and also screws with Phoenix, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I just gave him a mafia roar. <laughs> Don't hide under the the table, Maya. Unless there's room for me down there too. Um, I. Ah, hey, meow. What'd you say to me? N n nothing. I didn't say nothing. On it. <laughs> Who would have guessed that fear would induce bad Brooklyn accent in the judge? <laughs> I got me. I got bad. I got business to take care of. You hear me? Bro is very orange. Yeah. So who the hell called me into this hole? Me. It was you, ah, uh, Spikey. Uh, no, of course not. It was the ju ju judge. Your Honor. Oh, I dropped my pet. Uh, where on earth is it? Don't mind me. Carry on with the proceedings. Oh, well, just an average day in clown court. Maybe you didn't hear me. Maybe you didn't hear me. I say, who the hell was that called me in here? 
There's no need to shout. We can all hear you. What'd you say? Me. There's no point struggling. You're caught in a snare. The relentless snare of the law. And I'm the one that hauled you in. Ah, me. Oh, he's too cool! Don't let him get the better of you, Nick! Let's start with the basics. You know about the incident in question, correct? Incident? I don't know nothing about no stinking incident, mask boy, me! You mean you didn't attend the previous trial of Maggie Bird? Maggie who? I got more important things to do than watch courtroom dramas, me! Of course! Well, perhaps you could give us your testimony! Please tell us about what you did on the day of the murder! Me! Me, Phoenix Wright, me! <clears throat> you was the one who set this up, didn't you? <clears throat> you was gonna regret the day that you ruffled the tiger's fur! Me, you know what I'm saying, me! Maybe I should have brought a diaper with me today. Oh god, it's coming out! Get a grip, Nick! <clears throat> Welcome to Japan, California. We have the wildest court, the wildest people, <laughs> and even a little village. The judge flashed stepped away. I don't, I don't, I think he never came back. He's still under the table. Me, I don't know nothing about no murder. Me, I was tied up with business in December last year. Spent all my time in my office, me. I got whales lined up. Um, who borrow cash from the tender lender every single day. You just want to check my alibi? Just ask Violetta. Me. Oh, I found my pen. Oh, oh. oh, my pen. No, no. You know, I know the kind of game that play that that guy in the blue plays. Oh, me? That lowlife ain't no lawyer. He just punches away at stupid detail till he wins. Lowlife? Me? Listen up, smarty. Every time you ask me something that doesn't relate to this case, I'm gonna bill you fifty thousand dollars. You're just gonna borrow the cash from me. Uh, that's one loan contract I refuse to sign. Man, don't think it ain't gonna hurt when you tangle with the tiger. Uh, I love a good spectator sport. Just a minute. That's not really. The witnesses. How can I put this? A hungry tiger roaming the urban jungle. Get on his bad side and he'll bite everyone's heads off. Yours too. Very well. I have no choice but to impose a penalty system here. You just better be listening. I said I got big business to take care of. Big business! If I don't split now, I ain't gonna catch my bus. The court will impose a penalty for any irrelevant pressing of the wit- What? 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 You can do it, Nick! Maya, uh, any room for me down there? I'm just gonna accidentally press a button and lose the case. I don't know nothing about no murder. I was tied up with business. Spent all my time in my office. I got whales lined up. You just wanna ch check my alibi, just ask Violetta. I was tied up with business in December last year. Spent all my time in my office. Do we present pe press or do we present evidence? Are you sure about that? We're talking one month ago. Now you see these sharp, these teeth? That's how sharp my secret, my secretary is. 
sharp. Is he talking about Violetta Cadaverini? She write everything down on my scheduler. December, mainly in the office. That's what she says, so that's where I was. That seems like a rather sketchy schedule. Yeah. There he goes again. What did the tiger did all December isn't the issue. What's important is what he was doing on the day of the murder. Mr. Tigre, what do you want? Uh, if you wouldn't mind going into a bit more detail. This is a dead end and you know it. Remember the rules. No, it's essential that we establish the witness's alibi accurately. I agree. Dang it, Judge, get, 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 get out from under the seat. The victim was killed on December 3rd. Where were, were you in the office on that day too? Maybe you ain't listening. Of course I was. Never sit foot outside. I had meetings all day with a bunch of cats. Uh, with a bunch of cats wanting to do business with me. I ain't never seen that young kid before. I do believe the witness's last statement was important. Um, Mr. Godot, please. Mr. Tigre, the court asks you to add the last statement to your testimony. Huh. Don't let an animal beat you. Be a man, your honor, and ask him yourself. Ah! I was in the office. I never saw that kid before. We know he knows you, though. Meet with the tiger. Mr. Tigre! You claim you didn't know Mr. Glen Elk. But it appears that Mr. Elk knew you. What? Me. <sighs> okay, I I'm actually very nervous right now. One wrong move and like everything falls apart. Mr. Elk left this little note on his calendar. Meet with the tiger. And the date? December 3rd. December 3rd? That's... That's the day of the murder! So, Mr. Tigre, I submit that you did indeed know one Mr. Glenn Eld. Because on the day of the incident, you met with him! Look at the way he puts his hands in his pockets. <laughs> Very mafioso. Not bad! Man, you actually, you was actually not bad. S sorry I was just messing with you to see how good you are. You hear that, Nick? He said you're not bad. That's one compliment I can do without. He's lying. Um, witness. Oh, hey, how's it going, need time? Please remember that you are under oath. Lies will not be tolerated. You was calling me a liar. Is that what you was doing? Roll, <laughs> roll. So you're saying you claim to have never seen that kid before. Is that the truth? I said I'm dead serious. You better believe that this is the truth. <laughs> I said that gives me a time to enjoy another cup of pure black magic. I love how nothing... I love how it means nothing to be under oath. I know. <laughs> that is, while you testify again for the court, Mr. T. Gray. Row, 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 yes. Oh, look at I enrolled in the court, row, row. <laughs> Never actually met the victim? There's gonna be a lie right there. It's time I nailed this guy. Okay, not only do we need to look for the contradiction, we need to also look at the implications in his statement that lead to contradictions. Because if we press him wrong, we lose points. I ain't no liar, I never met Glenn Elk. Me. Also, I probably shouldn't have said that Godot was the killer because I lost three points <laughs> doing that. Oops. There was some lame guy with that name, though. Wanted to borrow cash from me. Set up a meeting with the guy at my office, Tender Leonard. I waited around for him, but he ain't ever showed up. Never been to the, that Trey's Beans joint. You was here? I see. That seems perfectly logical. 
You had arranged with the victim, but he didn't show up. I heard it's pretty hard to keep appointments when you're dead. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. Didn't I tell you you got a big deal going down? I ain't gonna make my bus now. I'm gonna have to take the express train. That bill's going straight to you, right? Man. Okay, we actually have him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to press this, but I don't know if it's relevant to press him. I ain't ever been to that Trey's Bands joint. We know that that's not true because we found matches from Trey's Band in your ashtray. I'm just gonna have to do this with confidence. Just believe that I'm right. Mr. Tigre, is there something you'd like to tell the court about these matches? Matches, man. What's you talking about? We found them in your office at Tender Lender. They're from that restaurant. Yeah. If you've really never been to Trey Bien before. What's a book of ma restaurant matches doing in your desk? Man, you've been snooping around my stuff too, wise guy. Man. What are you doing, my... What are you, my bong chain? Ain't no broad controlling me. Hold up. Well, witness. I think it's about time you started telling us the truth, don't you? Man, yeah, sorry. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, forgive me. I ain't no pussycat. I don't go back on what I said, man. But okay, I was on the joint that day. But listen good, all right? I might have been there, but I still never met with that kid. Well, well. Looks like an order just came up for another testimony. I'm this close to proving it was him. He did meet Glen Elk that day. And he did put poison in his coffee. He must have. I was supposed to meet with the kid at the restaurant that afternoon. When I opened the door to the joint, I saw one ugly seat. The guy was laid out over the table stiff of concrete. I figured the place wasn't hot. Oh, if the place wasn't hot already, it was gonna be, so I split. I hear the cop siren on my way out and went straight back to my office. I actually can't see a contradiction here. I see. You didn't actually meet with him in the end. Well, your cross-examination. Hold it. If I wait around any longer, I ain't gonna even make the normal express train. No more stupid questions. Huh. <laughs> no problem. Anytime Trite presses you on something irrelevant, I'll say he pays a penalty. Mr. Godot, that's my job! Your job is to slam that little gavel of yours and call a guilty verdict. So do it. Yeah, yes, sir! The special express ain't cheap, right? Use... It's just so you know since you're paying. Meh. How's it going, Holly? Ugh. Doesn't the rule of law mean anything around here? <laughs> I am actually legit nervous. I don't know what I should be pressing. I was supposed to meet with the kid at the restaurant that afternoon. What, what, what evidence do I have? I was supposed to meet with the kid. When I opened the door to the joint, I saw an ugly scene. He's gonna say, oh, I saw the, the, um, of the murder. The guy was laid out over the table, stiff as concrete. I figured if the place wasn't hot already, I was, it was gonna be, so I split. I heard the cop's sirens on the way out. Okay, I was supposed to meet with him. Uh, one thing we could do is we could try to nail him for why exactly he met with the kid. If we can get him to say why exactly he met with the kid, then we can get him for the um, MC Bomber CD. Could he see the victim from the door? That's a good question. I mean, he saw him stiff as concrete, whatever that means. Or, 
we know he's a tiger and he might like sausages. So if we feed him Gumshoe's lunchbox, maybe he'll tell the truth. Check the blueprints. Hmm, that's a good point, guys. That's actually a good point. If he went, if he only walked through the door, if he only walked through the door, he shouldn't have been able to see it. But then the question is, when I opened the door, I saw one ugly scene. Maybe, I think we have to press this. I hope I'm right. Or maybe this one? He saw one ugly scene that doesn't... The guy was laid out over the table stiff as concrete. The question is, what, what are we pressing? Are we pressing any one of his statements? I think maybe the open the door? An ugly scene. What do you mean? The witness has already told us, Trite, which makes that question irrelevant. What? I limit myself to 17 cups of coffee a trial. That's the rule. You better limit the number of times you take a penalty, Trite. What? 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 Or your guts will look like the inside of a chimney ashen. Or, or your guts will look like the inside of a chimney. Ash. Don't make me burn you again, Mr. Wright! I guess I shouldn't have pressed him on that. Guess I'm gonna make that special express after all. Meh! To recap, this ugly scene you saw was... I guess we're just gonna present. You're something of a loan collecting pro, aren't you, Mr. Tigre? No one escapes the tiger's clutches, man. Well, I'm something of a lie detecting pro, which is why I took a penalty earlier. And no one escapes the phoenix's clutches. I think it's about time we got something straight. You should press when I open the door. Well, you know what? The tiger scares me. <laughs> What's this, Trey? A new line of irrelevant questioning. These are the floor plans of the crime scene. You say you were standing at the entrance, Mr. Tigre. From there, your field of view would have covered something like this. Indeed. The witness would have had a clear view of the victim's seat. Can you imagine? If, if the legal system, if in this, could you imagine in the legal system, if lawyers couldn't ask for details? It's like, it's like, it's like, um, it's like, where were you? I was at the park. Which park? Objection! That's irrelevant! <laughs> <laughs> The witness would have had a clear view of the victim's seat. Isn't that what I just said? I saw the back of the kid's head. Unfortunately for you, not possible. If the court would think back, you'll remember that each one of the tables is a tall partition. Not even a partition, there's just a wall there. Why, that's true. Now look at the plans again. The truth is painfully obvious. From the entrance to field of view, the field of vision of any customer walking in ends here. So, from the entrance of Trey Bien, you couldn't have seen the victim, but you did see the victim because you met with him. Wrong. Have you forgotten the old man's testimony yesterday? The victim was alone at his table. 
But the defense has just proved that point to be moo! That's, oh, that's right! Hey, that's a moo point! <laughs> Good job, Phoenix, it's a moo point! It's a point that cows make! <laughs> Thanks, Gumshoe. The victim witnessed by Mr. Kuda was not Glen Elb, but a fake. What? In order to have Mr. Kudo falsely testify, the real killer posed as the victim he had just killed and acted out a charade. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> so when Tigre won the lottery, did he like jump up and he was like, Meh, I just won the lottery, meh. Oh man, all these riches, meh, I'm from Brooklyn, meh. <laughs> This trial has gone on long enough without the obvious question being answered. Who exactly was the real killer who impersonated the victim? You say the killer murdered Glenn Elk, then impersonated a victim in his performance for Victor Kudo. Obviously, the killer is Furio Tigre. No one else could have done it. What? Well, witness! Meh, <laughs> Now that's cute, meh! Aw, oh, you're a cute little princess! You just think you could pin this on the tiger? Meh, maybe you don't understand. So I dare you say it again! Come on! You got the guts! You can't learn me, Mr. T Tigre! It's the defense. Go ahead, uh, tell the witness, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright! Sounds to me like it must you, like it must be you, old man. You's got guts. I'll give you that. Mister, I don't leave me to handle this alone. <laughs> Perhaps I can end this embarrassment. Mister Kudo, please save me. Let's just go back over Mister Kudo's testimony one more time. The old man didn't just see the victim. No. This. The serving girl brought them java chino and put something in it. It was sugar! I understand why I hate her so much now. Who puts sugar in coffee? There's no question about it! Was the victim he saw the real victim or not? That doesn't matter. The fact remains, he saw the accused put poison into the coffee. Yes? Very impressive, Mr. Godot. Waiting for my absence to launch your attack. God, Phoenix, you are so uncool. Uh. Found your pen at last, Trite. It was in my pocket. But anyway, Mr. Kudo witnessed two people on that day. The supposed Mr. Glen Elk and the waitress from behind. Yes, your point. <laughs> I think the conclusion is obvious. If this Glen Elk was really a killer in disguise, then surely it's possible that the waitress was also part of the show. What? You mean the waitress was an imposter? Bum, 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 bum. The defendant, Miss Byrne, fell unconscious immediately after the incident. And someone used her fainting to hatch an elaborate plan to plan to pin the murder on her. Who on earth was it? Who is this very beautiful, adorable woman? Hey girl, um, are you from Tennessee because your head bandage makes you the only ten? I s I can never get it. How 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 do you integrate a head bandage into a pickup line? How do you do it? How how how? Her name is Viola Cadaverini. She's an employee of Tender Lender. You was making a big mistake. You know who Violetta's grandfather is. You better be going home in an armored truck tonight if you know what I mean. No, no, we can say that Violetta is actually innocent. 
Stop shaking, Nick. Where, 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 where was I? Yes, the defendant, Miss Byrne, had stated the following. Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table, it's true there was another customer in the restaurant. Um, she was sort of creepy. <laughs> Don't do that to Violetta. Violetta is my beautiful princess. <clears throat> there are just too many contradictions in this case. The second man at the victim's table who nobody but Miss Bird seems to have seen. <laughs> Except now we know that Mr. Armstrong also saw him. The earpiece worn by the victim's left ear when that eardrum was ruptured. The radio show when he was supposedly listening to half an hour after it was over. The spontaneous Brooklyn accent that he had. There is only one explanation that clears up all of these contradictions. The whole incident took place twice. One for real and one for show. And Mr. Furio Tigre was the only person who could have committed the crime. It's you! Witness, what have you got to say? Meh. You're a little princess, aren't you? That's cute. You's all right. I can do with a guy like you around. What do you mean? Okay, I'm in on this game. I'm gonna have to charter a jet in my to get me to my meeting now, but... I'm gonna give you one more thing to think about before I go. Something to think about? You's got it all wrapped up nice. All right. But you's missed out on one real important thing. Meh. Yeah. I was in the joint that day, and I met the kid too. Are we seriously just going to let him continue testifying? Can't we just pull him off the stand? We've proven that his testimony is incredibly, um, unreliable. But I couldn't have poisoned him to hear. You really expect us to believe you now, Mr. Tigre? Huh. <laughs> what a troublemaker. Trouble me here. Looks like we're going to need another one for the road. One more steaming hot cup of testimony. Indeed. Witness. I will give you one last chance. How many chances do these guys get? What happened on the day at Trey Bien between yourself and the victim? Yeah, I loaned Elf Cash about 100,000. That day we were due to have a little chat. The kid had the kid had hit his paycheck day, see? Anyway, he tells me he's got to pay up. I'm about to flatten the guy when he starts screaming. Yeah, I want it. Half a million bucks. Meh. He got lucky, you know, real lucky. If that waitress hadn't come and did what she did, everything would be been over. I see that the principal amount you loaned Mr. Elg was 50,000. Meh, yeah, yell. Yeah. yeah, well, you just got to vig. You's got the vig to take into account. The vig? You's got the vig to take into account. Builds interest, build up fast, you know. That's faster than fast. 100,000 is twice his principal. And the repayment deadline was December 3rd. Day of the incident in question. Man, he was one lucky kid. Got that half a million just in time. So I ain't have no reason to kill the kid. <clears throat> if I ain't got no motive, you ain't got no case. I got it! He has to pay back the mafia, right? Because he hurt Viola. He is under the wing of the Mafia right now, right? The Mafia is watching him like a hawk, and they expect him to repay that one million dollars. That one million, uh, that, they expect him to repay that one million uh, dollar bill, right? And if they don't, they're gonna, they're gonna kill him, right? So, um, what's his name? Glenn Elk made MC Bomber. If you guys remember, it's worth millions of dollars, right? And probably what happened was Elg said, 
I can't pay you back the money, but what I can do is I can make you this vi- this 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 computer software virus, and it can it, it it's way and you know he convinced him of taking the virus instead of the money because the virus is worth way more than his actual value, and it's something only Glenn could provide. So Glenn could provide that for free because he's a good amazing programmer, and he gets off um, with um, not having to pay back his debt, and the tiger gets back gets off by you know having millions of dollars way above his his um his original asking amount which is 100,000 but when elg won the lottery he could just pay back the 100,000 but tiger actually needed mc bomber because mc bomber is worth millions so he couldn't have paid back the mafia if glenn elg just gave him the amount that he owes he could only pay back the mafia if Glenn L gave him the, the the virus. So when he won the lottery, that was actually a bad thing for the tiger, because the tiger needed that CD to not be killed by the mafia. Oh, this this motive is way beyond just like money. Oh, this motive this oh this is like multiple motives layered on top of each other. Okay. I don't think he's um, punishing us for pressing anymore. That day. Uh, the kid had hit the paycheck date. No way. So anyway, he tells me he's got no way to pay up. I'm about to flatten the guy. Yes, I won half a million bucks. He got lucky. If the waitress hadn't done it, everything would be over. I got. He got lucky, real lucky. He tells me he's got no way to pay up. But if we press him, what else did he what else did he say? How much did he have left on his debt? You want it in round figures about 100 down. That's the whole amount. We're talking about a guy who has 58 cents in his wallet. What? You telling me he wasn't even going to pay for the coffee? He certainly seems to have been a brave man this Mr. L. That guy was real smooth, I tell you. Real smooth. You'll have your money in less than five minutes. That's what he says to me. The guy then calls me the tender tiger. He was sta skating on thin ice with me. Okay, yes, we can finally press him. In simple words, he just wanted to live. Essentially, but he's also a black market loan shark, so... <laughs> Was there anyone else in the restaurant at the time? I'm glad the judge is on my side now, now that he's lied so many times. I don't remember. There was no one there. I'll wear that ridiculous tiger shirt for a month. Mr. Armstrong, Maggie, and if I'm right, Viola were all there at the time. So, the victim had intended to repay you from his lottery winnings from the beginning? <clears throat> Seems that way to me. But you wouldn't normally expect to win the lottery, would you? Uh. The undying belief that your next roll will end the worst losing streak you've ever had. That's what defines a true gambler. He makes it sound cool. Don't be tempted, Nick! That's a mental illness! All I know is the kid took a shot and he got lucky in the end. Uh, I do have a little chat. Dude, have a little chat. The kid, there's a payback date. See, tells me he's got nowhere to pay up. The waitress, you mean? The girl with the glasses in the fitness chair. Man, who else could I meet? If she hadn't gotten the way, things would have been bada bing, bada boom, over and done with me. Maybe I should push a little harder. Tell me what Maggie did. What exactly are you implying the defendant did? How about you go ask Four Eyes in that half a million dollar ticket? She wanted so bad, she poisoned Elk's coffee. Likely theory. Your word hasn't held water lately, Mr. T. Gray. Let's not forget that this witness was actually at the scene, Trite. 
Man, the law don't exactly agree with someone of the... With some of the deals I sent down. I couldn't be there when the cops showed up, so I split. I see. Your, uh, your honor. The witness's last few statements are worth a good two cups of coffee. I concur, Mr. Cadeau. You will amend your testimony accordingly. Man. So that's what you zapped him, Phoenix, right? Thanks to what she did, my business with that kid was over. What was the business? The tiger's trying to pin this crime on Maggie. If I ask him about what he saw, it's only going to damage the case. What do you mean things would have been over and done? I use all their, their what? I'm talking about the cash. I was there to get my 100,000 bucks. That's all. I'm a businessman. It was all coming together before the waitress got in the way. As far as I can tell from the witness's testimony, other than the recouping of his loan, Mr. Tigre had no motive for killing the victim. Well, Mr. Wright, are you happy with the testimony? You're not going to get anywhere if the testimony stands. Your Honor, the defense would like the testimony amended. Very well. Witness, you will amend your testimony. I was after the 100,000. I didn't have no other reason to kill the guy. We got him. So you just intended to get back the $100,000 Mr. Elg owed you? Correct? I loaned the guy the cash, so that's my right. Unfortunately for Mr. Elk, I don't believe the 100000 was what you were really after. Objection. What are you getting at, Trey? What else would a money lender be after other than money? Oh, the money lender was after money, but money in a totally different league. The kind of money that this single disc, a single disc like this, would fetch. Man, that's my music, man. You ever heard of MC Bomber? Uh, man. You gotta touch that. Down, 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 down. Meow, man. You gotta touch that. Meow, 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 meow. What is that? A computer virus, your honor. A virus called MC Bomber. A computer virus? What do those do? A computer virus is a program that wrecks havoc on the insides of a computer. A computer? What does one of those do? <laughs> Thank you, your honor. Welcome back, Mead Games. I guess the beard isn't the only part of his honor that's from the Stone Age. I'll explain it to you later, your honor. Right now, this is the important point. A virus like MC Bomber would be worth several million dollars in the black market. Several million? That's more than 10, which is my salary. No wonder the legal system sucks. Lending money with no hopes of ever seeing repayment would normally be bad for business. But in this case, the very fact that Glenn Elk had no way to repay the money is crucial. What? Glenn Elk was a programmer, a highly skilled programmer. That skill was the collateral Mr. Elk put up in order to borrow the money. Objection. You're trying to suggest the witness's motive was to get a hold of some computer program? Exactly. The witness may be have a poor fashion sense, but he is by no means an idiot trite. A man like him could get his hands on one million dollars without resorting to murder. Of course he could. Provided he had the time. But what if he had needed the money right away? When the pressure's on, the luxury of choice tends to disappear. Seems you have a logical conclusion for this theory, Mr. Wright. Would you care to share it? Pretty sure the whole court is from the Stone Age? Fair enough. Why did Mr. Tigre need the money to the tune of one million dollars? Not one million, probably more. They're probably forcing him to pay collateral, too. Take that. In December of last year, you found yourself in need of a huge amount of money. About six months ago, you were involved in a traffic accident, weren't you? 
an accident involving a car and a scooter, which was in which a young woman was injured. She was taken to the hospital where she underwent surgery. How much of this do you know? These medical papers document the treatment of the young woman in question. She's also very beautiful. And I kind of wish she was my wife. According to these, her operation cost approximately one million dollars. And yet, when the payment was due last month, you somehow managed to pay it in full. One million? A preposterous sum. Someone should sue these HMOs. Huh. No one would pay a bill like that. If the medical association got wind of it, the hospital would end up as dead as a morgue. But Mr. Trite had no po but Mr. Mr. Trite, oh dang it. But Mr. Tigre had no choice but to pay. Because his very life depended on it. Meow. Order, order. You say his life depended on it. Indeed it did simply because the injured woman was none other than Viola Cattavarini. Did you say Cattavarini? <laughs> That's a stupid last name. Bruto Cattavarini, mob boss in charge of all the underworld activities in the city and doting grandfather to his precious Violetta, also known as Viola Cattavarini. Four. Your life was in danger unless you paid compensation to the boss, correct? It makes sense. You were desperate to acquire that one million dollars Brutal Cadaverine demanded of you. So desperate, you decided to sacrifice Glen Elk's life to pay your debt. <clears throat> Alright, we got him. On the day of the murder, Mr. Tigre's sole intention was to get his hands on the CD. Glenn Elg had no way of paying back the 100000 and Mr. Tigre knew it. But a miracle happened. The kind that Mr. Tigre would prefer to say never happened. But he can't, and neither can I. The lottery win. Exactly. At the 11th hour, Mr. Elg won half a million dollars in the lottery which left Mr. Tigre with no ways of getting his hands on that all-important CD. At least, no legitimate way. Chabra. <clears throat> so he resorted to illegitimate means. That's... that's crazy. He murdered Glen Elg and then made his next move. To frame Maggie Byrne. Mr. Tigre posed as Glen Elk. While Viola Cadaverini played the role of Mrs. Bird. Miss Bird. Then they reenacted the whole thing to establish a witness. The witness was the one we all heard yesterday. Victor Kudo. Actually, interestingly enough, his poor testimony saved us. Because his poor testimony helped us establish that there were two different events. So thanks, Kudo. Objection. Like I said, Trite, that's crazy. No one can pull off a stunt like that. For starters, there's no way the chef would have been kept in the dark about it. But Mr. Armstrong was in on it from the beginning. Have you forgotten already, Mr. Kudo? Mr. Armstrong owed the witness money. Half a million, in fact. He had no choice but to go along with the tiger's plan. Order! You put on a good show, Spikey. If you want to stay alive in the loan shark business, you've got to be careful. You say I dressed up like that kid created some witness frame somebody. If I did something crazy like that, I'd be leaving a trail as bright as my shark. Me, I ain't dumb enough to do something so sloppy like that, man. I agree. You do. Despite your appearance, you are very careful. That's why you took one more precaution. One more trick to make sure Bird had no way out. Another one, Mr. Wright. 
Interesting. Why don't you fill us in on the plan, trite? What was this trick Mr. T. Gray uh, performed to frame the accused? What? Why, why do we care? What? Why? What? Huh? Huh? Coffee cup? Victims? Bears? This one? This? What on earth is that? What an insult to think anyone could be fooled by such a childish imitation. Well, judge. Unfortunately. <laughs> Consider yourself insulted, your honor. Mr. Tigre, you didn't just pose as a victim on the day in question. A month ago, in this very court, you posed as me. Well, you gotta admit the hair if the hair fits. What? 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 The truth. But the witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Wright. Although, now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? I swear to God, people can't be this stupid. Me? No doubt it was you, standing in here at very court a mere month ago. The Phoenix Wright who put up the most dis disreputable shabby defense I had ever seen. How dare you blame the chairs for being the murderers? Can you prove that, Gramps? Prove the attorney who represented the accused here a month ago was this man. Are you prepared to take the stand and testify it was him? Um. Mmm. Mia. Hey. Yeah, forget about it, Mia. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't do something like that. Not, not me. You, um, you, 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 um, made a mistake, right? It was, uh, some, some, someone else. Have you no pride, sir? <laughs> Skill. Increase stupidity level up. Thank you. Uh, don't laugh too hard and disturb the party, <laughs> Kiyoma. Uh, did he think Phoenix got a massive sunburn? Um, they literally stated that the reason why everyone believed he was Phoenix Wright is because he claimed he went to Hawaii and got a sunburn. That was literally his excuse. That 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 is literally the excuse, Holly. That's the <laughs> This isn't a matter of pride. In this case you didn't know in case you didn't know Trite, here in court we deal with people's lives. Nerg! Mr. Godot was right. Your your honor. Speaking for myself, I am absolutely convinced. The attorney in question was the witness standing before me now. However, I preside over this court as judge. With the power and vest with the vested power to hand down a verdict, someone in my position cannot be swayed by memory without evidence to support it. I, I you've gotta be kidding. You've gotta be kidding. Do you got do you not record your court proceedings? If the defense has no further evidence, the court will now excuse the witness. Circumstances surrounding Mr. Tigre are dubious for sure, but not conclusive. But we've come so far! You say he impersonated Glen Elk. You say he impersonated you. But none of that adds up to a murder charge. You don't have a shred of evidence that the witnesses, witness poisoned the victim's coffee. Sucks to be you, right? Don't mess with a tiger. You're gonna get mauled. You has got that? I've gotta be kidding. Are we- are we not gonna pursue this point? Are we- 
are, are we? Are, how? How did? How? 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 I was step. I, but I, you, I, 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 but what? But I was so close. <laughs> Looks like I won't be needing a refill. If I just one more piece of evidence, one more piece of evidence, maybe I can get Maggie off the hook. The witness's cross-examination is over. You're free to go, Mr. Tigre. Come on, Gumshoe! Come on, Gumshoe! Your Honor, sir. Yeah! Wait! Detective! Detective Gumshoe! Sorry it took so long, pal. I staked everything on this. My badge. The works. Here it is. My heart's counting on this, too. What is it, Detective? Isn't it obvious, pal? It's the final decisive piece of evidence. What? Alright, quick recess. We got this, we got this. Sorry it took so long, but I finally got the results. About the prince, pal. It was medicine bottle. Oh, you know who the prince belonged to? You think I'm some kind of hack detective? Of course I know. So tell us, they're the tigers, right? <laughs> you bet. Claris Crystal, all over the bottle. They're Furio Tigre's ball prints, all right. That's great. We've got him now, Nick. Uh, Phoenix knows we have to somehow use the bottle to also demonstrate that he poisoned the coffee. That's gonna be, okay. So, evidence-wise, we know that Furio Tigre touched the medicine, but why do we care? What's wrong with you? You've hardly said a word since Detective Gumshoe got here. He's laid everything on the line for this Nick. I know. Look, I'm sorry, it's kind of hard to say, but Hey, Gaming Parrot. Really doesn't make any difference whose prints are on the bottle now. Uh, what, what, why not? We need to produce, at this stage in the trial, is irrefutable evidence that the tiger put poison in Glenn's coffee. He already admitted he met the victim. In fact, his prints are on the bottle. Uh... That doesn't really make any difference now, though. I knew it. Great. No matter how I try, I'm never of any- Oh, that's not true, Gumshoe! We will turn this around! You didn't miss a stream, did you? You missed several streams. Hey, don't be so hard on yourself. This was our last chance to help Maggie. I've been working on some useless piece of evidence the whole time. It's all right. I'm a real loser. It's not breaking news to me, pal. No! 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 Don't you dare get depressed on me, Gumshoe! We're gonna win this! Detective Gumshoe? Maggie! You've been working on something for me? Sorry I let you down, Maggie. No, you didn't do it. And I'm a detective. We're supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. I'm really sorry. But get out of your hair now! Detective Gumshoe, wait! He's gone. Isn't there anything we can do now, Nick? I wish there was. Gumshoe worked so hard to get that evidence. If only there was some way to use it. Ear medicine. <sighs> the
the notifications were off, then you gotta turn them on. Turn them on, Gaming Parrot. I feel awful for him, man. Mr. Wright! Yes, Your Honor. Furio Tigre's Prince. So what? So what? Found in her apron pocket. You did? Uh, you can also set an alarm. So that's what I do. I set an alarm for whenever I stream on your phone. Or you can, um, you can also, um, if you follow my Twitter, I always post before I start streaming. So there's lots of ways to turn on notifications. It's 2 a.m.? Oh, thanks so much for staying up with me. Granted you recess so you could prepare this decisive evidence you've discovered. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's think about it backwards. Is there a reason why he had to grab the medicine bottle? Is there a reason why he had to grab the medicine bottle? The victim got this from the doctor before going to Trey Bien. The bag is empty. Naturally. We can assume it's evidence that will actually stand up in court, can't we? Think, Phoenix, think! Don't let Gumshoe's hard work go to waste. Man, how much more of my time are you gonna waste? I ain't been to no court before. But you lawyers should know how to blow things out of proportion. No doubt. Given the nature of the evidence, it will speak for itself. Nevertheless, you will talk us through it. Well, I know I can't prove anything with this new evidence. I'm really back into the corner here. Maybe if he thinks he's got me beat, he'll let his guard down a bit. Okay, okay, we're gonna bluff it. We're gonna see if we can bluff him. Don't keep us waiting. Yes, let's bluff. Yes, this is contains the cyanide. This bottle contains cyanide. This is the defense's final piece of evidence! Isn't that... the victim? Your Honor! Naturally, the court is already aware of the contents of this bottle. However, interesting new information has come to light. We have clearly identified some fingerprints on it. Fingerprints belonging to you, Mr. Tigre! What? But Mr. Wright! What conclusion are you hoping to draw from this new information? Everyone in here knows what this bottle contains. Except one man in this courtroom should theoretically be in the dark. Yeah, my prints are on the bottle. My prints are on that pansy looking bottle. Is that what you saying? Well, what the hell's in it anyway? A phony trial, a phony lawyer, and phony clues. Everything about this case has been phony. Seems like the perfect excuse for some phony evidence! Phoenix, you're gonna lose your, um, your, your... <sighs> Phoenix? Phoenix, you're gonna lose your license.
This is the decisive piece of evidence that'll prove your guilt. Because it contains Mr. Armstrong's oil. <laughs> I can't, I can't risk it. Potassium cyanide. Potassium cyanide. The poison used to murder the Mr. Elg, your honor. The victim's killer used this very bottle. And on this bottle, Mr. Tigre, we found your fingerprints. How do you explain that? Ha! Yeah! You make a good clown, you know that? What? You ain't never gonna get this to stick. You just making me laugh now. You think a cheap bluff is gonna fool the tiger? The buff? I can see straight through your phoenix, right? That ain't the bottle with the cyanide in it. No, no, no! This is the bottle we found traces in the poison in. Don't mess with the tiger or you're gonna get ripped to shreds. The cyanide bottle was brown and it was made of glass. This cheap looking piece of crash don't look like nothing. Oops. What? Why has everyone gone quiet? I said the bottle. This is the bottle you're referring to. Yeah, that's it. That's the bottle with the cyanide. But you ain't gonna find my prints on that bottle. Don't let that cozy looking suit fool you people. Not just lawyers playing games. Tell him, Mr. Prosecutor. Tell that guy where to go. Why are all the witnesses idiots? Do you realize what you just said? What I said? What did I just say? Me? You were summoned to the court for the first time earlier today. If you really had nothing to do with the murder, you shouldn't have known all the little details. For instance, you shouldn't have known what kind of bottle the potassium cyanide was in. Yeah. Um, all potassium cyanide comes in brown, um, glass bottles. Don't you know that? What? I, I buy it all the time. What? Um, uh, no, no, I don't buy anything. But just now you slipped up in front of every single person in this courtroom. Mr. Wright, there's like four people in the gallery. Yeah, but my mom's there and it makes me look cool. You described the exact bottle used by the killer to hold the poison. Um, yeah, meh, 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 meh. You don't know who you's messing with. I am Day Tiger. I control millions of dollars in the black market. You think I'm just gonna let some jumped up suit get the better of me? Sure, the last piece of evidence was phony. But that's just what you deserve. I'm pretty sure Godot couldn't um, raise an objection here and get this entire testimony thrown out. <laughs> The phony trial, phony lawyer. It was all played out by you, the biggest phony of all. Me. <laughs> 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 What's going on? Looks like a blackout, sir. <laughs> well done, Trey. I saved my 17th cup just for you. Bailiff, is 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 is, is this? Is, are there no laws about assaulting the defense? Savor it. While you watch the police restrain your prey. <laughs> Mr.
Mr. Wright, you caught a tiger by his toe. But if this one hollers, he won't be let go. Easy, measy, mighty, mighty mo. Easy, easy, measy, mighty mo. I feel old. Now then, how are things with Mr. Tigre, Godot? He's being arrested on the suspicion of murder of Glenelg, Your Honor. Fortunately for us, uh, fortunately for us, we managed to rectify a very grave error. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Thank you. Oh right, you guys remember Eeny, meeny from uh from uh um from the second game? I miss Eeny, meeny. Even though she wait, meeny, meeny, eeny, mo, meeny, eeny, meeny, miny, miny, meeny. I I I forgot. How's it going, hat kid? Miss Bird was found guilty in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. Yes, she was. And in the absence of genuine evidence. But the tiger made one grave mistake. Indeed. He very nearly got away with everything because this court is a complete sham. He is not really a frightening criminal, we're just all idiots! The truly frightening one is the defense attorney over there. Very well, I will deliver my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Burb. The tiger made the mistake of being too bright and orange so people could spot him. <laughs> I loved Eenie Meenie. She was adorable. Mr. Wright, I... I'm at a loss for words. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Maggie. I was so mad when Mr. Wright landed me in all that trouble a month ago. But now I feel like I can forgive him. That wasn't me. That was the tiger. Look, Nick, in the doorway. Detective Gumshoe. Oh, uh, I guess I'll be heading off. See, see you around, pal. Wait! Detective Gumshoe. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, congratulations, Maggie. Thanks. I knew you were innocent all along. Um, can't, are, are, are Gumshoe and Maggie gonna get together and have little dumb babies? Why didn't you say that in your testimony then? Uh, uh, it's his job? That's like, can, can you, Im oh my god. It's like, what, you, uh, uh, <laughs> A murderer kills like 10 people? Don't worry, my boyfriend's a cop. <laughs> uh, well, I, I was, uh... I'll be heading off again. Wait up, detect- He just ran off. Maggie, why are you being so hard on him? We already know he's extra hard for you- Uh, on, on you! He busted his butt for you! It's thanks to him that we got the medication bottle. That wasn't even of any use! But... It's only because Mr. Wright used it so cleverly. Mr. Gumshoe was just running around in circles! Poor guy. Looks like she still isn't ready to forgive him. Can't you put in a good word for him, Nick? Yeah, Maya's right. I should help Gumshoe out. Do we, do we help him out? Do we help him out? Maggie? You know... Detective Gumshoe's been really worried about you throughout all this. I wanted to believe that, sir! But on the first day of the trial, he practically gave the judge a free pass to lock me up. He, did, he didn't have any choice, Maggie. He's a detective. He has, to re, he has to report the facts. He doubted me, that's why. He thought I might have done it. Got to prove to her that Gumshoe really cares. I know. I'll give her this. D do we do we help him? Do we help him? Yes. Yes. Yes, he deserves it. He deserves it. Wingman for Gumshoe. Magshoe or Shogi? <laughs> Take that. 
Here you are. A present to celebrate your freedom. That... A present from Detective Gumshoe. He made it with a ton of love. And a lot of grease. Damn, that's a lot of grease. He said you lost weight and that he was worried about you and that he liked your curvy figure. And w Maya! Detective Gumshoe? I actually really like weenies, you know? It's all coming together! <laughs> you guys hear that? I'm pretty hungry myself, you know. Yeah, the trial dragged on a bit, didn't it? Um, is it okay if I eat this now? So, how is it, Maggie? <laughs> so the case of phony versus genuine came to an end. The false allegations surrounding Maggie have all been cleared up. And who knows? A whole new chapter of her life is about to start. Maybe. You know, if you like weenies, I'm just telling you, you know Gumshoe's nickname, right? <laughs> All right. I'm going to take a very quick bathroom break, and then we will continue to the next chapter. Oh, Orpho! A bathroom break, a donation? No, thank you. Oh. Orpho, thank you. I think it ended really well. I'm glad we, I'm glad Gumshoe, do you think Gumshoe will get together with him? I don't know. Thank you so much, uh, Orpho. Do you have any quests for me? Oh. Yeah, I'm so glad it ended well too. Thank you. Um, and I'm really glad you're enjoying the stream, guys. Um, I'm going to head to the restroom and, um, so you can't see me tearing up and I'll be right back. I'm, I'm definitely laughing. Oh no! Bowser, what happens to Viola though? You know, maybe she, she dates Phoenix. Um, doesn't work out. Um, and then they go their separate ways. Thank you so much, Bowser. What happened to Viola? Oh, thank you. Oh, no, I, I should go to the bathroom. I'm not. I'm laughing. <laughs> thank you. I'm so glad you guys are enjoying the the, um, the 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 stream. I'll be back. I saw a uh, an, an, a very fruity Edgeworth. So on the, the picture of this um thing. So hopefully we get to see Edgeworth. I'll be right back. Do you have any quests for me? Oh no, JD! No, JD, you didn't donate too. 
Time to join in with tea. Oh, that's that's some McDonald's teas. That's that sweet tea from sweet dollar tea from McDonald's. See, oh, see, see what you guys are doing. Every time you donate, I gotta go to McDonald's and then I'm gonna be unhealthy. You guys are donating to my my death. Ah, <sighs> and another. No, stop, stop. No, no, Orpho, please. Thank you, thank you so much. Do you have any so quests much. for me? Oh no, no, Alpuka. Alpuka too! Oh no, please stop. Please. Please, no, no, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Do you have any quests for me? Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to handle it. I hope you guys know that I'm not like, you know, trying to be rude when I say don't do that. I'd like, no, I, when I say no, like, I don't mean like, no, you guys are awful or anything. It's just, I'm just grateful and I never know how to handle it because what, I don't know how to, uh, and Randy, no, one dollar sweet dollar tea from McDonald's. Oh God. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm I'm not I'm I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm laughing. Do you have any quests for me? I'm laughing. I'm laughing. I'm laughing. Um I'm okay. I'm okay. Thank you so much, guys. Oh, thank you so much for the um just, you know, just for enjoying with me, really. Um I'm so glad that, you know, you all can like join and actually, you know, spend time and hang out and just be like, be silly and fun together. The McDonald's frappes? What the heck is a frappe? Give me your tears, funny man. No, no, I don't, I'm a man. Big, big, strong men don't cry. The girl, let her go. Oh, the girl. Let her go. Shut up! Come closer, and I'll kill her! Sorry, but you're not gonna get the chance. I'm reading through the file of an old court case. It was the first case of my longtime mentor, Mia Fey. After escaping, Fowles met with and then murdered Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Recaptured on Eagle Mountain eight hours later. Her very first client was a death row inmate who had been recently broken out of prison. That was a whole year before me and I ever met. Why is Phoenix in a hospital? I don't know, but Phoenix has been in a hospital a few times in the series. Maybe this is one of those series points or one of those points or something. What, we're in court? Huh. Yeah, this got super intense. What the heck? Gumshoe looks like that kid who goes home and role plays on Roblox. Hey, I'm a detective. <laughs> you guys got any Robux? Hey, hey, no illegal solicitor of Roblox here. Ah, uh, this is the law. <laughs> February 16th, 9.24 a.m. Mia! What up, Mia? Uh, I'm so nervous. I feel like I'm gonna die. I never should have accepted this case. Ah! Uh, good morning. Don't be so jumpy, Mia. I didn't do none. I swear. I didn't kill nobody. Terry Falls, my very first client. Sentenced to death five years ago, and now a prison escapee. You know what's one thing I, um, you know, people debate about capital punishment all the time. Like, and I'm not going to say anything particular in cap about 
capital punishment because let's be real here that can get into some really really dicey territory but one thing that is really 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 difficult to think about is the fact that people who end up on death row also sometimes will be waiting for their death for like decades it's crazy like if you think about it you have a death penalty but you're also in jail for 20 years before that death penalty Dang. It, it's like, it's it's a really weird, it's a really weird thing to think about, huh? Sentence, because I see him, he says sentenced to death five years ago. And he escaped probably recently. So he's been in jail for five years waiting for the death penalty. God, man. I don't know, I don't know, man. That seems really horrifying. You know, I mean, I get it, they're criminals, but it's like, that's horrifying, man. Just relax, Mia. Make small talk and try to relax him. Um, uh, um, so when are you sentenced to be executed? Um, uh, dang it! No, that wasn't helpful at all! Uh, um. Why do you like killing people? What the, no, no, that's not right. Uh, why'd you escape? Uh, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I didn't kill nobody. I never, I never lied. I didn't escape from nowhere. Oh, I'm trying to figure out what his voice. I didn't think for nowhere. I didn't escape for nowhere. I didn't escape for nowhere. Okay, he kind of has this kind of like a very stretched out voice. But Mr. Falls, the police recaptured you just two days ago. Uh, sorry. I told a little lie. Look at him. Dang. This guy must be messed up in the head, man. Oh boy. Okay, let's see. Okay, we have- I'm absolutely blind right now. I don't know what the heck we're even talking about, so... My client, sentenced to death five years ago, escaped from custody two days ago. Um, 25, 23, police officer and the victim, key witness against the case against Falls five years ago. Interesting. So, the motive that people are trying to establish is that he killed her out of revenge, maybe. Stabbed with a knife in the back, died from blood loss between four and five. It's brand new and it sparkles. Um, remember, um, my my sister always tells me this. The um, you can always tell how good a doctor is by how white their coat is. If their coat is very white, they don't know crap. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, I I did do it. I never killed nobody. Uh, sorry for asking, but you're sentenced to be executed, right? I'm really, really sorry. They sentenced me to die five years ago. But I was tricked, I tell you. That woman, she lied in her testimony. That's why I got the death penalty. I swear, I didn't kill her. I could never do that. I believe he didn't do it. They're probably going to throw a curve because he looks like the person to murder and kidnap. Yeah, unfortunately... Especially big guys, they get the short end of the stick there. You know, big, big dudes. It's like, oh, well, he looks like he might be a bad guy, so we're just going to be a little bit harsher on him. Unfortunately, that's the justice system is not free of bias. Two days ago, he escaped from the police wagon when it crashed. Oh, it crashed. Then eight hours later, a policewoman was murdered before the police could recapture him. Okay, so what's interesting is he's already been found guilty once. And his case is not the case that we're taking on. It's a completely different case. So, which means, in theory, he already has a murder on his record. Which is already starting out on a terrible foot. After you escaped, did you meet a policewoman? Yeah, I did. She's the reason I escaped. So that much is true. He did meet with the victim. I didn't kill her! 
She was alive when I left. She was alive. It's true. I can trust him, right? I mean, I should. Huh. Huh. That ha looks familiar. Is is it? Could it? Could it be? What? It that? No. Just no way. Oh my god! You're not gonna figure out the truth by just staring at the guy. You're... Why are you here? I came to see how our little kitten was doing all alone in the big scary lion's den. I thought maybe you'd like someone to play with. Uh, where is Mr. Grossberg? <laughs> the old man's probably still in bed. But he's clutching an empty bottle and mumbling to sleep. Aren't I good enough? After all, it's me. Diego Armand. Godot is Mia's boyfriend? Uh, Maya? Ah! I'm hot and bothered by my sister's boyfriend! Ah! <laughs> But Diego died, like, several years ago. So maybe his, the poison turned his hair white. <laughs> I, I didn't say... So, Diego Armando, the finest attorney at Grossberg Law Office, is this here for me? No, 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 you've got it all wrong. Today, you're the finest. After all, it took an amazing amount of guts to take this case. Imagine, an escaped death row convict for a first client. Yeah, uh, thanks. I sure wish I could get it out of it, though. <laughs> Relax. I just heard some good news. The prosecutor, the prosecutor for today is fresh out of his diapers as well. Really? However, unlike a certain somebody who I won't mention, he's earned the reputation as a genius since the beginning of his law career. But today is his law career, exactly. Genius. Well, it's about to head time. It's about time to head in, kitten. Dropping those claws of yours. It's time to go. A solitary confinement cell for the condemned must be the world's loneliest place. And that's what my client ran away from. Every other lawyer gave up on him. But not me. Look at those sparkly eyes. He's definitely innocent. <laughs> when I saw those overflowing eyes, I heard that simple childlike voice. I just had the feeling he was telling the truth. We're going into court. We are literally going into court. I have no idea what the trial is about, and we're going into court. Oh my god, is that who I think it is? Uh, this guy, what was he? He was kind of Canadian, right? Eh, um, uh, court is now in session for the trial of Terry Files. Eh, 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 court is now in session for the trial of Terry Files, eh? <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, that, that's probably the, that's probably the, the, the approximate voice. The defense is ready, your honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, your honor. I understand that the lawyers of both sides are newcomers. Yes, your honor. I'm Mia Fey. Miles Edgeworth, your honor. So you're the new prosecutor everyone's talking about, eh? And they say you joined the prosecutor's office at quite an early age. At 20, your honor. I guess that little kitten hasn't earned herself much of a reputation yet. Come on, Mia. 
You can't lose. Not to someone younger than you. Hmm. Young people running the trial. Not sure how... Uh, I'm not too sure how I feel about that. Now then, eh? Uh, the defendant in this case is currently a fellow on death row. A felon on death row. Two days ago, he escaped from the police wagon. That's correct, eh? Precisely. But the defendant is not on trial for escaping prison. On the day the defendant escaped, a policewoman was murdered. So we're here to determine if Mr. Falls was responsible for her death. Question mark? You got it, kitten. Didn't you read the court record? No, there's literally nothing in the court record! Oh my god, look at him. Today is his debut. A hot shot. Well then, Mr. Edgeworth, eh? Uh, let's hear your opening statement, eh? Yes, Your Honor. It was five years ago. The defendant, Terry Falls, was sentenced to his death in this very court. His crimes were kidnapping, extortion, and murder. The girl he threw off the bridge was only 14 years old. <laughs> Not sure how you feel about the voice you gave young Edgeworth. <laughs> Truly horrible crime, eh? I remember it well. There was no decisive evidence, so the trial was long and protracted. Correct. But in the end, what finally decided the case was... Is that better? <laughs> Correct. But in the end, what decided the case was... A certain witness's testimony. Isn't that the same finger wag that good, um, that um, Von Karma does? Uh, oh, right. Right, he's coming... Fresh off of learning from Von Karma. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. The girl would have been around Edgeworth's age when it first happened. Oh, I see. How old was Edgeworth in the original game? I think 24. A witness testimony? The testimony of the detective Valerie Hawthorne, the person who confronted this criminal. She arrested Mr. Falls at the scene and later testified against him. She said she witnessed Mr. Falls throw his young victim into a river. Apparently he yelled yeet as he did it. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall are never recovered. So Miss Hawthorne's testimony was the one that put him away. Yeah, that police woman, eh? Uh, you just mentioned. Uh, that wouldn't be... Exactly. The victim. The same woman that was killed two days ago. Police Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Ah, eh. I see, eh? The man who was sentenced to death based on her testimony escaped two days ago, eh? But the only thing that on his mind to take revenge against the woman who convicted him. Hmm. Ah, the truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? Yes, yes. It is quite obvious that the defendant is guilty. Guilty verdict. Case dismissed. Wait a minute. That's not right. At least hear the case before you decide on the outcome, Your Honor. Ah, watch yourself, Miss Faye. I'm not sure I care for your word choice or your tone of voice, eh? Young people these days simply do not know how to ex respect their elders. Why, you? <laughs> Even at 20, this man was a bitch. <laughs> Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, eh? Please call your first witness. I call the defense, the detective who was in charge of the initial investigation of this case. That judges. Oh my God! Witness, state your name and occupation. Yo, Gumshoe has been has been, like, in the fray for so long, his coat turned green. Gumshoe! Dick Gumshoe, sir! 
I'm the homicide detective in charge of the case, sir. I just started last week. I finally got promoted to the detective division half- Oh. I finally got promoted to the detective division, division half a year ago. I don't believe anyone asked you about that, but I am very proud of you, De Gumshoe. Detective Gumshoe, you are an amazing man. One day, you will meet a woman named Maggie. Don't you ever give up. Uh, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Miss uh, Defense Attorney, but thank you. Hey, ma'am. You got any idea how much work it takes? What is it? You. You're, you're really gorgeous. Hey. I'm, I'm Detective Richard Gumshoe. Uh, they call me Big Richard, or uh, as the ladies call me, Big Dick. Hey. Yeah, come on, come on. Excuse me? Uh, no, no, serious, seriously, my heart is aching for you. <laughs> Detective, pull yourself together and try to be professional. Otherwise, I will write you up on contempt so quick that something other than your heart will ache. Oh, trust me, <laughs> Prosecutor Edgeworth, something else of mine is aching right now. <laughs> I'm, uh, oh, oh, um, uh, I got, got it. Now then, Detective, eh? Um, tell us about the incident. Yes, sir, right away. The victim was Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, a veteran of the police force. Technically speaking, Mia would be ejected. I've said this so many times, like the fact that Mia does not get like thrown out of court for wearing that is just astonishing. But I mean, I'm sure they let it slide for, the judge lets it slide for personal reasons, obviously. She was stabbed in the back once with the knife and died from excessive blood loss. Stabbed once. Not once is already stated in the autopsy report. The court would like to hear more details about the incident itself. Yes, sir, I got you. Okay, let's take a look at the aerial map here. Oh, boy. Oh, this one is... Oh, man, look at this. There's a bridge there. Here. Eagle River. Oh, my goodness. Like, like, do you know what the problem is? I'm processing all this information right now. I didn't have any chance to investigate. It's just like, here's a whole bunch of information, and it's trial four, so you know it's going to be really hard. Now, this is a sketch of a dusty bridge, dusky bridge, old suspension bridge. And the river that runs under it is Eagle River. The victim and the defendant met up there, on top of the bridge. After stabbing her in the back, the killer carried the victim back to his car. He was recaptured at the police checkpoint as he was trying to make his getaway, sir. Why does Edgeworth remind you of that one kid in the playground that would tattle on you for not sharing your retainer? <laughs> Yeah, I, I see, eh? Approximately, how, how big was it? Bridge located 40 feet above Eagle. That's a big drop, man. That's more than four stories, I think. Oh, whoops. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, no blood was found on the bridge. Mm. Mm. Mr. Edgeworth, I warn you that I absolutely despise conjecture. If there was no blood on the bridge, then you have no proof that they even met there, eh? Your Honor. If you would listen to the testimony we have prepared, I'm sure you will be convinced. That the two of them most certainly did meet on the day on that bridge that day. Why, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm not sure I like you wagging your finger at me as though I was some sort of hauser. Detective, proceed with your testimony, eh? Uh, y yes, sir. Here we go, Mia. Hang on. Okay, now. Listen carefully, kitten. One little mistake and this guy will dunk you for more- Well, dunk you. One little mistake and this guy will dunk on you. Trust me. And get ready. On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked me. 
So Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusty Bridge at, at the destinated time and met with Miss Falls. Mr. Falls! That's when she was brutally murdered, sir. The criminal stuffed her body into the car trunk and tried to make a getaway. Mr. Falls was arrested at a police checkpoint. We set up at the base of the mountain. Well, well, you certainly have established the importance of the bridge, eh? Naturally. Now then, would the defense please hurry up and proceed with the cross-examination, eh? Y y yes Your Honor! Cr Cross-examination coming right up! Hey, hey, settle down there, kid. If you keep trembling like that, you're gonna make me spill my coffee. I'm- I'm not trembling. It's just- just cold in here. The courtroom can be a cold battlefield, all right. Especially for a beginner. I don't need you to worry about me. I mean, I, I mean the defendant, the, the witness, everyone here is a beginner. <laughs> you got me there. But maybe you should keep your claws out and show them what you've got, kitten. You know that move you showed me last night? Not now, Armando. Okay, Mia, stay calm. Just remember. Those court procedure videos you stayed up watching last night. <laughs> she's so doomed. Oh my god, she's doomed. <laughs> Armando is good. Yeah, it was a bit of a shock, huh? God, that's like staying up to watch Adora the Explorer before a Spanish exam. <laughs> okay, an unknown person phoned the sergeant. This unknown person! You have no idea who it might be, right? Sorry, but I'm afraid I do. What? The one who called Sergeant Hawthorne was the defendant, Terry Falls. What? Oh, the defendant! The defendant called her, eh? Sergeant Arthur was a very thorough person, sir. She left a note about her phone call with Mr. Falls. A note? Yeah, a top secret memo that she left in her desk. Victim's note added to the court record. Hmm. According to this note, it seems that the one who called her to the bridge was indeed the defendant, Terry Falls, eh? Mm -hmm. Whose bright idea was it to keep a note from me? <laughs> Looks like the judge is even more sure of his verdict now. Listen up. Never ask a question you don't already know the answer to. See? I say that all the time. And yet Phoenix does it anyway! It's that detective's fault. He said it was an unknown person. Hey, 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 don't make that face at me. I just said that way, it that way, because the prosecutor told me to. Was that a trap? With that cute face, I didn't expect spiky-haired men to fall for him. Hmm. Is Godot related to Armando? I think he is Armando. A bridge up in the mountains, but why meet there? Uh, because... A very important place for the defendant, that's why. Well, what do you mean by that? If you remember, five years ago, the defendant kidnapped a young girl. He was chased onto a bridge, and it was there he killed this hostage. And that place where all this occurred is, of course, Dusky Bridge. The very place where Sergeant Arthorn was arrested and handcuffed Mr. Falls. Huh. Returning to the scene of the crime. How nostalgic. And, uh, that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. Was the body of the victim discovered right away? Yeah. We were really on the ball. We found the criminal within an hour of the murder. It was great! We even got to say, don't move! We got you surrounded! Oh man, that was awesome! Wait a second, isn't there something weird about that? The location was a suspension bridge up in the mountains. 
So how'd they find out about the crime so quickly? Sergeant Hawthorne. Sergeant Hawthorne must have mentioned the phone call to someone else, right? Uh, if that's what happened, she wouldn't have been killed. She never mentioned the phone call from Mr. Falls, but she left a note on her desk about it. If only I'd noticed earlier. Maybe she'd still be alive. I wonder why she didn't mention the phone call to anyone. Uh, the criminal stuffed her body. Mr. Falls had a car then? Well, the bridge is way up in the mountains, ma'am. The defendant and the victim both went up there by car. I mean, how else, right? What? You mean the defendant drove his own car, eh? Uh, no, no, of course not. It was stolen. Stolen from a young couple that had been waiting for a red light. Yeah, car thieves. I'm not sure how I feel about car thieves, eh? Is this guy sure about anything? <laughs> Here's a photo of the stolen car strung. Oh, there she is. Naturally, that's the body of Valerie Hawthorne. So this is a photo of a car that's already moved, right? Because the only way they would see it, be able to take it, is the pictures after they stopped it. Notably, there's some sort of um, damage up here. I wonder what that is. Um, interesting. Anyway. Mia's smart, Maya is the complete opposite. I don't know, maybe she worked hard to be smart. <laughs> maybe stupidity runs in the family. Oh, whoa. That doesn't look too comfortable, eh? The victim. She was stabbed in the back. Uh, yeah. Huh. For some reason, men always get to s seem to get stabbed in the back. We're talking about a woman here. Exactly. Women always tend to stab men in the back. Am I complaining about my love life right now? Probably. You can't tell from this photo, but... The knife was stuck in her back nice and firm. The condition of the body when it was discovered is very important information, eh? Detective, was there anything strange or noteworthy in the trunk of the car? Here's a... Uh, photo. I don't see anything strange. What did the defendant have to say about this photo? What well, he always says, ma'am. Didn't do it. it didn't do nothing. That's all he ever says. Nothing. Uh, nothing. Uh. I wouldn't say he did nothing. At the very least, ha, uh, it's November, and well, well, good for him for um making sure no nut November is going strong. Um, it's just what he always says, Your Honor, and then he always says, oh, "Sorry, he told a little lie." Something like that, or something like that. Well, in any case, it seems like he was caught and arrested. Precisely. Mr. Falls, uh, Mr. Falls was arrested at a police checkpoint. We set up at the base of the mountain. Um, that is certainly some impressive police work. Well, no, I, actually, it was way too close for comfort. We set up that checkpoint just after 5 p.m. We figured that Mr. Falls might just try to run. What do you mean, too close for comfort? The two of them arranged to meet at 4.30 p.m. It takes approximately 30 minutes to get to, from, uh, to go from the bridge to the checkpoint. Hmm, that was kind of close. Any later and Mr. Falls could have slipped by. Listen up, kitten. There's a big trap waiting for you in that testimony. Walk into it carelessly, and it'll leave more than just a flesh wound. Fun, huh? No, it's not! If you won't have a chance at all, you better get some more information. And if you're going to get caught in the trap, it's best to get caught early. You can always look for contradictions afterwards. You have famous contradictions. I sure hope I can find some of those. On the day of the incident, we pressed him for that. They were designated to meet Dusky Bridge. That's where she was brutally murdered. The car trunk. 
Here's a photo. I don't see anything strange, do you? Anyway, so do we just press him and say there is something strange? Can we just say there is something strange? Oh, whoops. Um, uh, Purple Kid says, wait a minute, why is there a bullet hole? I don't think it's a bullet hole. I think what you're looking at is, this is probably, up here is probably the, um, the, uh, like the lock for the trunk. And then there's cracks around it. So it looks like someone was trying to force the car open. Um, uh, I, I don't know. Let's just do, I don't see anything strange, do you? Well, I see something strange. Ha ha ha. What? Your honor. Uh, your honor. What do you think of the witness's statement? I don't think of anything about it. I don't think anything of it. How about you? I guess I don't think anything of it either. <laughs> if there wasn't a problem, can we just let it slide? Here's a photo. Do you see anything here? Press it. What did the... Well, apparently they don't want me to point out the fact that there seems like a crack. Um, I don't see anything obvious, so why don't we just press everything again? Uh, let's see what else we have. Victim's note, confidential material. Oh, we have to read this. Falls, 430. That at that bridge. Wear a white scarf for identification. Oh, interesting. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth. Dahlia! anything oh I see they put up the picture so that we can say the thingamajiggies Attention! witness well, what is it uh, do you have something to say miss Faye I'm sorry I totally forgot what I was going to say stupidity runs in the family it seems This is the first time I've ever actually had to address someone like that. Mm, you should have practiced before coming to court, eh? Honestly, Miss Faye, I'm not sure I like this. Mm. Say there, little kitten. Want a piece of my coffee candy? Candy? Well, you're still too young to be drinking real coffee. Boy, have you met Gen Z? They start drinking coffee at like four years old. <laughs> uh, come on, Mia, shake it off. You're a lawyer. And you know what the worst part is? They drink coffee like it's hot chocolate. <laughs> they don't even realize it's coffee. Detective. Oh. Um. Uh, yeah, yes, ma'am. This photo. You said there was nothing peculiar about it. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Well, I suggest you take another look at the note written by the victim. The scarf? Exactly, Kiyoma. The, the note? It very clearly says, wear white scarf for identification. The caller must have forgotten what the victim looked like, thus this special request. Ah, uh, I, uh, uh. I have one very simple question for you, detective. Where is the white scarf? I can't seem to... F Find it in this photo. Uh, well, to be honest, we didn't find it in the trunk, ma'am. And you stopped there? You should have looked for it! Ah, oh no! It's only been six months and I'm already going to be paying peanuts! Ah, ha, ha. 
the caller um told her to wear it and identify herself. So I'd expect she did just that, eh? Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do you have to say about this? I sigh in British. I see the defense is a little lacking. The scarf you are searching so desperately for. Is it this one, Pacheco? Oh, gee, Edgeworth, you want to also update that autopsy report? Uh, uh. Where do you find that, sir? On Dusky Bridge. I was there first and decided to conduct my own investigation, and I put all the evidence in my pocket so no one could touch it. Why, why didn't you tell me? I made a decision to keep all pieces of evidence in my personal satchel. How, how did they get away with this? How? 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 This is the pastel I'll have previous- This is true! This is Edgeworth before he was a good guy. So he was a very- He was a bad guy. He even has the little ascot thing. Like, um, what's his name? Von Karma. It's the safest place I know. <laughs> Hotshot sure has some flair for the dramatic. Objection withholding evidence. Objection! You're a loser! Sustained! <laughs> it's not exactly white as the caller requested, but as you can see, it was close enough for what it was intended for. Objection! Your mother! <laughs> hmm. Looks like I spent some time in the mud, eh? Not surprising, it was drizzling on the mountain that day. Prosecutor Edgeworth, he was intentionally hiding the scarf from me. The court will accept the scarf into evidence. Now, if the attorney for the defense has finished embarrassing herself, I'd like to move on with the testimony. Is that all right with you, Miss Fay? Boy, I'd like to wrap this scarf around this smarmy little neck. Oh yes, please do. I've been waiting for one of my classmates to do that. It's a very spiky-haired one, but he doesn't really have the confidence to approach me, so he'll be a good warm-up. Very good. Now, if we're done with this mud-covered scarf business, take a look at the scarf. Worn by the victim. Found in Dusky Bridge. The prosecution moves to establish conclusively with hard evidence that Miss Hawthorne and Mr. Fallis did indeed meet on the bridge that day. Further, we will show exactly what occurred. Man, that sounds quite promising. Can't wait to hear all about it, eh? Everything is moving at his whim. Don't forget, kitten. There's a reason why everyone considers this kid a genius. A genius, huh? Edgeworth definitely had his character growth. Yeah. Now he's more attractive to Phoenix. Actually, there's an eyewitness who took place, who was there when the incident took place. The photo was accidentally taken. How... How often is there just so happens to be a witness that happens to take a picture of a murder? I swear to frickin' God. It shows the Vic wearing the scarf, sir. It was drizzling that day, fortunately. A little hard to see what was going on. Okay, so the victim's over there. And so the supposed killer's over there holding his ball and chain. Um. Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the- From behind? What? That must have been when the scarf fell off. From behind? How did Tech do accidentally- I swear to God, man. Mm, looking at this photo. You really get the sense that the bridge is very high up, eh? It's about a 40-foot drop from the bridge to the Eagle River down below. Mr. Edgeworth, who took this photo anyway? Let's just say it was a very well-intentioned third party. I swear to God. I swear. I swear. Ah, a potential witness. So why isn't this person in the courtroom? Well, uh... They said they absolutely did not want to testify. 
The person in question is very delicate, Your Honor. Oh yeah, she's delicate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Delicate as a brick. Besides, as long as we have this photo, we see no reason to compel them to testify. I'm not sure how I feel about that, eh? Seems to- SEEMS TO HAVE BEEN TAKEN BY THE WITNESS! So, as you can see, Carrie Falls both had the motive and the opportunity. I think it's quite clear at this point what happened on the bridge. Hmm. Ah, the truth is becoming clear to me now. Yes, it's quite obvious. He's clearly guilty, eh? Not a- this- I- I- cross-examination! Hmm. What do you mean, hmm? Okay, so we know something's fishy here. Actually, this photo was accidentally taken. Oh, I'll take a picture in the rain and outdoors of two people meeting up on a bridge that is broken and think absolutely nothing. <laughs> the photographer accidentally takes like three pictures. Oh, that one has less glare. <laughs> The criminal shoved the victim down from behind. From behind? She's facing him. Stabbed her in the back? Is that what they're trying to ask for? Let's just press everything. I think we need I think we need more information about the picture in the first place. Who is this eyewitness? Uh, she's a college student. She's studying literature. Female college student. That's right! Meaning she's female and a college student. Ma'am? She doesn't do well in front of other people, so I came to testify for her. Maybe so, but as an attorney for the defense, I have the right to cross-examine her. For the time being, we are not relying on the witness's statements. That is all. What is that supposed to mean? Um, no, no, really. What is what what does that mean? I'm, I'm not good at this. <laughs> Our case doesn't rest on the vague t testimony of some female college student. A female college student, eh? Hey! He said hey! Okay, 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 calling it right now. He's Canadian. He's Canadian right now. It means she's a female and a college student, sir. If you absolutely must hear her testimony, you'll give us a good reason why. Please tell us about the more decisive evidence in question. The victim is wearing a scarf in the photo, all right. So, about the witness who took this photo. What was the person doing up in the mountains? She was taking photos of wildflowers, apparently. Uh, turns out, wildflowers include, um, inma- uh, death row convicts. There are many unusual types of flora on that mountain, Miss Faye. People in the area say it's because of the spirits that live there. Spirit? Uh, now that you mention it in the photo. This is cloudy like fo- uh, is, 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 is that a ghost? Uh, I don't believe it! No, no, Your Honor, I don't think it's a ghost. Uh, drizzling, huh? Yeah, that's right. It was light rain coming down. The whole place is dreary. Not as dreary as the moon in this courtroom. <laughs> I blame the ghost. I blame the ghost. Looks like a cold front just moved in. In any case... The point is that the area was quite damp. There was even some fog. Ah, uh, I even slipped and fell while I was on the bridge. It's really something. Is this part of the witness's testimony as well? Of course it is. He pushed the victim down hard in the back and she fell down right on her stomach. Hmm. I remember that happening once myself, eh? It was really brutal. Are you talking about seeing someone get pushed, or were you the one getting pushed? Or does that mean you pushed someone down like that? With his mind-boggling tales and the way he said, brutal. I wonder if he's Canadian.
I promise you I have never played this game. <laughs> but me and stupid defense attorneys, we're like this. We're like this. <laughs> How? 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 How is this possible? <laughs> Bribe him with hockey tickets. <laughs> Your Honor, I have hockey tickets and maple syrup. Ah. Save your nasty look for the right person. Take a look. Poor baby. The court record seems to have wet itself. Hey, watch where you spill your coffee! The court record, huh? So in other words, there was a struggle between the criminal and the victim. Uh, that's what the witness said. Well, she looks like she didn't remember about the scarf, but from what she said, it sounded like a pretty violent fight, ma'am. The area was wet from the rain. The bridge was probably wet, too, which would explain why the scarf was covered in mud. But there's something about his testimony that's bothering me. <laughs> Talk about a surprise. I had no idea there was a photo. So, what do I do? You really still believe him? Mr. Crybaby, I mean? Of course I do! <laughs> so the little kitten believes in fairy tales, huh? I feel like it's not- you know, at first I thought all the defense attorneys in this world are jerks. You know, I'm slowly starting to realize, like, they're not jerks, they're just like, they've given in to reality. <laughs> in that case, the answer is obvious. If what you believe is the truth, then it means somewhere hidden in that testimony is a contradiction. In the next court case on TV, we just see Mana pointing his finger. OBJECTION! <laughs> One huge contradiction that's waiting to be discovered. It's your chance. I don't like this because the criminal shoved the victim down from behind. It's possible that she just turned around. But I, I guess this is like kind of the direction. We'll try to make him say, that seems wrong. Be more specific. Maybe. Seems to have been taken by the witness. Objection. No. That's not what they want. Okay, let's... Let's see here. Alright, the criminal shoved the victim. What do we have? Maybe I haven't seen all the evidence. Found on Dusky Bridge. In the photo in the trunk of Fall's car... We have that. So why wasn't she covered in mud? Is that what they're going for? That must have been when the scarf fell. Let me press this a little bit more. So in other words, the there was a struggle between the victim and the criminal. Okay, so there was a struggle. So I think what they're trying to say is that she looks perfectly clean. If w She might be wet, but she's clean. Okay. The criminal shoved the victim down. That must be when the scarf fell. If she shoved the victim down and stabbed her, she would have gotten muddy. Is that what they're asking for? So at the time of the crime, there was a light drizzle coming down, correct? Yeah, and fog. Just the general soggy atmosphere. Oh, the hair flip! Well, I have evidence that doesn't go with the soggy atmosphere. But this is a photo of the victim's body that was found in the car trunk, eh? Considering the conditions of the scene of the crime, something isn't right. By all means, please enlighten us. What isn't right, eh? What about the photo doesn't fit? The fact that she isn't muddy! Naturally, the answer is right here! The victim's coat? As far as I can see, there's nothing strange about it. Exactly, that's what's strange! Recall the witness's testimony. What were the conditions on the bridge that day? 
It was drizzling and foggy. Dusky Bridge was all wet. If the victim had really fallen down on her stomach. The front of her coat should have been covered in mud! Uh, man, that, that, that's exactly right, eh? Ah, oh, the other day, I fell on a muddy street and my gorgeous playoff beard was befouled. I do admit that the crime scene was... Oh, he, baby voice. I do admit that the crime scene was quite wet that day. However, that does not mean the top of the bridge itself was muddy. If your honor has fallen in the shower instead of a muddy street, your glorious hockey beard, pride with the, of the legal league, would be wet, but not muddy. Fortunately, I have yet to test that. Still, your point is well taken, eh? Can you prove that the surface of the bridge was muddy? The surface of the bridge? Huh. <laughs> a real man wouldn't stand for a taunt like this. Neither would a real woman! Um, I mean, I'm, I, I am a real woman. Actually, act um, uh, you're beautiful. What? What? How does Mia get anything done with Armando standing right next to her? <laughs> of course I can. Here's the evidence that proves the bridge was muddy. The evidence is this scarf! Ah! It should be obvious. If the scarf on the bridge got this muddy, it means the bridge was obviously covered in mud. <laughs> ah, Edgeworth's, um, young Edgeworth's, um, freak out. Huh. No, I can't be outwitted by this novice bimbo- EXCUSE ME! EXCUSE ME, Edgeworth! How dare you, Edgeworth? I am so glad you changed later because right now, I swear, I, oh, I swear, a boy about to get a pounding. And I don't mean a type of pounding that Phoenix Wright would give Edgeworth. Same to you, buddy. Um, Miss Faye's assertions make perfect sense to me, eh? I do admit that there appears to be a contradiction between the condition of the victim's coat and her scarf. However, the real question is, why is there a contradiction? For every contradiction, there exists an explanation. Let's look at what the explanation may be in this case, shall we? Uh, all right. Not like he's really giving me a choice. <laughs> You're doing pretty well for a little kitten. Mr. Armando. No matter what he says, the contradiction always comes down to a lie. It's either the victim discovered in the trunk, the witness's photo showing the defendant and the victim, or the witness's testimony that she stated, stated that she saw the moment of the murder. Just relax and think it over, it's pretty simple. False evidence is one of those three. Um, what you said just now. Not sure I like that. Am I sure of anything? Nope. Is the streamer sure of anything? Well, he knows that if he makes one single mistake, the chat is going to make fun of him, so... He's a little bit scared right now. You know, eh? That wasn't me, Your Honor. It was the coffee aficionado over there that said it. Court is not in the habit of accepting false evidence, you know? Blame it on him, Your Honor. He's the one trying to slip false evidence into the court. But we won't let him. We'll expose the evidence as the flimsy scam it really is. The false evidence in this case is... The witness's photo. The body in the trunk. I believe the body in the trunk, we have a photo of that. The police got that. The witness's photo. She has a photo. Whether or not it's a lie, it's obviously the witness's testimony. It's a no-brainer. Obviously, it's the witness that's suspicious. Not you, Gumshoe, the, the person you're representing. During his earlier testimony, the detective pointed out a crucial fact. The criminal shoved the victim from behind and stabbed her in the back. Now, is that the testimony exactly what... Is that the... Now, is that testimony exactly what the witness claims to have seen? Yeah. 
That's what the witness told us. See, I, I presented evidence against that. And they're all like, no. Ah! That testimony is filled with holes. After all, the victim's coat isn't dirty at all. Mmm, eh? That's true, eh? Uh, it's not just true. It's the truth. There was, if there was truly decisive witness in this case, I'm certain that boy Wonder over there would have called them in the first place. Your Honor, the defense requests to cross-examine the eyewitness. The testimony presented so far is not only vague, but contradictory as well. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, it appears that we'll need to hear from your mystery witness after all. You should brace yourself for the brutal truth. Your Honor, the prosecution has no intention of hiding the witness from the court. We are prepared to present our witness at any time. Very well. Please bring forth your witness at this time, eh? What Edgeworth said kind of worries me. What does he mean by the brutal truth? Now, let's proceed with the testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, please go right ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. The prosecution summons the woman who saw the events that day with her very own eyes. This is it, Mia. The battle begins here. Witness, what is your name and occupation? Girl. Girl, girl, I swear to God. Everyone is so silent that I can hear their hearts going pitter-patter. Girl, I swear to God. I am against hitting girls, but that ain't no girl. That's a demon. Hmm. Oh. When I look at you, how can I put it? I channel my inner Kazuma. The hammer of justice is unisex. <laughs> That's a Batman quote. You look as scrumptious as a double double of in a dozen of donut holes. Um Ew <laughs> I feel like I wanna hurry up and hand down a verdict just to have a bite. Eh? Ew? Frickin' frickin' judge! Non-partisan? What happened to that? Hey, not so fast. As I said before, the witness is very sensitive and delicate. <laughs> She's freaking as delicate as a freaking iron rod. I would ask the court to please exercise extreme care when addressing her. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. You truly are a gentleman, eh? Miss Faye, you can learn a lot from this man, eh? He's such a gentle man. I'm sure he doesn't act like one to me. How will Mia Faye deal with Dahlia Hawthorne? Find out next time. Court is rotten. The whole court is super rotten. Uh, I found a good cliffhanger. I was afraid that I'd have to go through like the whole court case. I wonder how long this court case is. Didn't um in the very first case of this game, I think they said like Mia Faye's very first trial ended in a disaster. I don't even know. Um. Sounds like a you problem. Hopefully you can make it, Arcane. Uh, yeah. Um, I didn't expect that. 
Um, so, so chapter four, they just throw you right into a trial, and it's not a, it's not an easy one. It's not obvious what the, um, the game is asking you for. I'm so glad that Edgeworth turns out to be a good boy. Yeah. Another court case to go on. Yeah. I mean, if Edgeworth never became a good boy, he'd be in jail right now for killing his own father. <laughs> Uh, that is um, Holly in case it, this, this isn't really a spoiler because this is the fourth case But in the first case of the game spoiler for the first case in the game in case you want to click off right now But spoiler for the first case in the game that girl tries to kill Phoenix, right? Um, so that that's the first case of the game of this particular game uh, Yeah, so Yeah Yeah um, for those of you who are new, if anyone here is new, um, I don't see any in the chat, but maybe there are some listening. Um, I like to, um, you know, just chat with my uh, my um, audience So at the end of the stream. So if you guys have anything you want to say, um, just, you know, just tell me you got A's on your report card or you aced your final or your girlfriend um, dumped you. So you started hitting her sister, like, like those types of things. I... Hey guys, I think Diego Armando is good though. <laughs> Hold up. Yeah, like um Well, I never knew that. <laughs> um um what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, getting A's on a report card is a very good thing. It's a very it's a very good thing. Keep trying to get um, A's in your report card. Uh, yeah, don't, don't, don't think about the other two points. Uh, what? What? D.A. Go, Armand, Do. <laughs> I feel like you're, that's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> go, Do. Where's the T? Where's the T? Diego Armando. What do you think? He looks like he's... He looks like he's Argentinian. I don't know why I think that. <laughs> Just add a random T. There's no T because he's a copy guy. Ah, okay, 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 good point. Get out of here with that pun. You guys coffee people or tea people? Um, I've been overloading on coffee lately. You're failing three classes. You might be in the fay family. <laughs> That's why they don't go to school. <laughs> coffee, but you like tea. I'm I'm a coffee person. Um, you know, what is it? The British? Is it the British? The British drink their tea with milk and sugar. To me, that's so weird. Tea is supposed to be drink black. You, you guys know what I mean. I'm a W person. Brits ruin tea. British people. <laughs> yeah, um, Edgeworth is the type of guy to add milk and sugar to his tea. <laughs> yeah, it, it be stops being like tea and then starts being like... Like milk drink. <laughs> like, you know, milk tea. Like, milk tea, like, is, like, you get, like, a boba place. It's not really tea. It's essentially milk and sugar. And then they just make it, you know, they add some tea to make it look brown. Milk and sugar is odd. <laughs> I know, right? Edgeworth is the fakest Brit ever. He, he's totally, he's totally a British poser. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, let's be real here. Phoenix loves that. Um, Phoenix loves the British side of him. Edgeworth seems like a colonist from the seventh. How the heck did you arrive at that? He's wearing a freaking suit. He just has the British accent to sound fancy. As he gets more nervous, his British accent increases just to cover it up. Oh, uh, no, that is. Norton, 
Contradiction. Chip pip pip cheerio. Oh, the, the witness is indeed lying. <laughs> Oh, with tea and the queen, tea with the queen and crumpets and all that. <laughs> There's something called froth, which is milk that is mixed in. Yes, people put it on coffee. If you've ever had a cappuccino, that's what a cappuccino is essentially. It's essentially bubbled milk. It's milk that's like super, super bubbled, and then you put it on top. <laughs> Yeah, but um, Edgeworth, we love Edgeworth. We we stand Edgeworth on this um, stream. We simp for Edgeworth on this stream. You drink cappuccinos regularly? Uh, I haven't had a cappuccino in a very long time. I just generally I drink straight espresso. Uh, um, I still have to update the waifu um command, uh, Randy. I haven't updated it yet. Uh, give me one moment, guys. Um, Edge, Hedge, Edgehog, Edgehog. <laughs> the trees in Minecraft. The trees in Minecraft are very attractive. You guys, um, I've only ever streamed. Um, I've only ever streamed like um, Minecraft for a very short period of time, and during that period of time, there was no one to simp for, so I started simping for whatever I could find, which is trees. I mean, that tree took his vitamins. Dang. That tree was big. Have you ever eaten condensed air? I have not. Excuse me? Like condensed milk maybe, but condensed air? <laughs> it's very good. What is it? What is condensed air? I'm gonna look this up right now. Condensed air. Wait! Condensed air as in like the spray things so that you can clean your keyboard? That's what com No, it's compressed air, not condensed air. What is what is condensed air? I've never heard of that. You could have saved my dignity and not simped for anything in my- I- I have a problem, Holly. You know that, okay? I'm sorry. You guys know I have a problem, and you guys still make fun of me for it. You are so mean. <laughs> Uh, you guys have anything planned on a Saturday? When does school start for you guys? Is it um, starting on Monday or Tuesday? Um, yeah, I'm going back to work on Monday. Although, yeah. Next Tuesday. At least you have the Monday off. Um, you guys, somewhere on the 10th. Uh, okay, so you have one more week. That's nice. IDK, I haven't scheduled my classes for next semester. Oh yeah, speaking of which, y'all college kids, um, y'all schedule, are y'all working on the schedule for your classes? I know quite a few of you guys are freshmen, so you probably don't have priority for scheduling. So yeah, just do your best. I had to deal with that too, trying to schedule classes and realizing that all the classes are full. Yeah, those are, those are wor the worst. Hopefully you guys got the classes that you won. Already scheduled? Good for you. Also already crying, uh-oh. Um, for those of you who haven't gone to college yet, um, when you go to college, generally you're responsible for scheduling your own classes. What happens is that you have a certain list of classes that you have to take. And um, they'll say, okay, we offer this class in fall. We offer this class in spring. So you have to you know, plan out your schedule for that. And when they offer the class, they're like, okay, this class is from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays. So you have to make the schedule yourself. Sometimes you want a class that is from 8 to 10, but another class is also from 9 to 11. So you can't go to both of those classes. So you have to save that class for another time. So yeah, you have to plan out the schedule based on the offerings of the classes, when they're offered, what time they're offered, and so on and so forth. It's not always easy because sometimes it's a bit tricky. Um, it's a bit tricky sometimes because sometimes you need to take certain classes, but they're all full. Like, you know, 
certain classes can only hold like maybe 100 students or maybe if it's a small classroom like 40 students and if those spots fill up you just gotta wait for next time which sometimes it sucks honestly also you have priority oh that's nice right you have some sort of um scholarship or some sort of um honors program or something like that maybe like a um i don't know but you know good for you hehe <laughs> liver um Tuesday, I have a soccer game. You play for a club team called Liverpool, and we're the best. Wait, Liverpool? You play for Liverpool? Liverpool. Wait, 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 hold on, hold, hold, hold the phone. Hold the phone. Oh wait, not the pro team, okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, I was like, hold the phone, hold the phone, man. <laughs> well, all the best on your um soccer game. Um, there's a club team for kids. Um, I got a whole bunch of value from playing club volleyball. Like I played, you know, my school had a terrible volleyball team. Like so, like they didn't really have a volleyball program, um, and it was just people fooling around. So I played club volleyball. And those are some of the best moments of my life. You had to try out. Yeah, like for my volleyball team, I had to try out. And you know, trying out and you know, playing on a team that really like aspired to do better and to improve and to win, like that really helped me, not only as like, like as a volleyball player, but also as a person, also as like a way to like learn how to like deal with difficult things. So it's like, I'm really, that's, that's awesome. That's freaking awesome. I don't like, I know maybe I sound like a boomer right now, but um, I'm so glad that you have like that team for you. Like, like don't don't like I, I might sound like an old like an old grandpa. Oh, I'm so glad you get to enjoy your life. But no, like seriously, that is freaking awesome, and I'm really that that makes me really happy knowing that you get to you know hang out with your uh, soccer friends and go um, practice and get better. So um, I hope you do well. I hope you win, and I hope you you know continue to get better. Uh, what what position are you? Club sports can be expensive. Yes, club sports can be very expensive. You do have to make a monetary commitment. Plus the coaches for learn to play, don't go hard on you and push your limits. Yes, yes, I do like, I do like that. Um, what type of coach do you, you play? You're a goalie, oh boy. Um, goalies are tough, man. Uh, so yeah. Um, I don't know too much about soccer to tell you the truth, so I'm not gonna pretend like I know, but I know defense is tough. Um, because, you know, nobody ever notices when the goalie makes an amazing save. They only notice when you don't save the ball. So being defense is always awful because it feels like no one cares. But um, work hard on that defense, man. And one day you're gonna get a killer save and everyone's gonna be cheering. Trust me on that. Um, yeah, um, my coach um, for volleyball, did it wasn't very like hard wasn't very like hard ass um but um he was like you could tell when he was disappointed so it's like that was the scary thing it's like when he was disappointed we would just feel so bad so like that was an, a major motivation like he was like he was like i know you guys could have done better it's just i'm disappointed with you guys and like we would feel so freaking bad and like that's how we got to improve because he was so good at like making us realize how sad it is that we lost a game that we could have won and so on and so forth. Um, you only let two goals out of six games. That's awesome. You guys must have a really strong defensive unit. So and as a goalie, man, you're managing that. So freaking awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not sure. I don't want to, I don't want to sound condescending because I don't know much about soccer. So I'm not going to pretend like I know it, but that's, that's awesome. I hope you, you know, continue playing and continue having fun. Uh, second grade, I did flag football. Fifth grade, you did basketball. Soccer and basketball for a few summers. Haven't really done any since. Well, you know, I do like how a lot of schools, they just have like an offering. They just offer like little sports programs for kids. I think that's a nice thing. Um, you know, not all kids um, are going to be like really competitive in a, um, in a sport, but I think all kids should at least have the experience of competing at something physically. I think that's very important. Before, um, um, before, what is it called? Before, um, volleyball, I actually 
did swimming. I was a flyer. Um, and uh, so I was reasonably good at swimming. But, you know, as I got more competitive, I realized that if I wanted to continue to be like one of the a strong flyer, I had to hit the weight room a lot. And I freaking hated the weight room. So I went to volleyball instead. And in volleyball, you do weight room as well. But it's a lot more... Um, the weight room is just mostly about jumping. And then after that, you do a lot of like um, sprinting types of things, like sprinting stamina type of things. Like... Um, like, you do a lot of more, like, dynamic motions than weightlifting, and I freaking hate weightlifting, so... <laughs> Endurance is super important, especially for soccer, man. I don't play for a school or town because you're very competitive. Yeah, but don't, don't let that competitiveness get the best of you. Um, I remember when I was uh, younger, I hated playing volleyball with casual people because I felt like, oh, what's the point? But, you know, remember, sometimes when you play volleyball, um, or in your case, maybe you go out and play soccer with, like, um, maybe you are, like, in middle school and um, there's, like, a, uh, a team building day at, in your class and you go out and play soccer. Why, you know, remember that, you know, sometimes playing soccer, like, sometimes the sport isn't for the competition. Sometimes it's just for the, you know, the, the fun of it. So if you're not in a competitive environment, don't like take, don't try to be competitive. Just, you know, take the opportunity to have fun. Even I would play chess against novices, especially men. <laughs> I know how to move my pawns. Pawn, right? Is it pawn? The soldiers, right? The soldiers are called pawns, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, see? I know how it works. I know chess. One of these days, I'm just gonna have a chess day where I like try to learn how to play chess. You know, one thing I've really wanted to do is I know chess streaming is really popular and I doubt it'll happen anytime soon, but one of these days, I just want to go on to like, just hopefully be able to collab with like a chess streamer and have him teach me chess on um, on stream. Explain on Passan. I know what on Passan is, right? Sometimes the soldiers turn into assassins and instead of attacking the, the other soldier directly, you move in front of them and then you backstab him. That's what... That's what on passant is. It's a backstab. Right? If the pawns run too fast, they will miss the assassin that's going to backstab them. Yeah! You think I don't know what on passant is? Mm. Pawn equals useless. <laughs> Queen equals power. <laughs> Dang. Don't underestimate the little people. <laughs> uh, my favorite um, chess piece is the king, actually. I think the king is such a cool piece. Like, it's actually my favorite chess piece. Bishop equals tall. Knight equals pony. The knight has a broken leg, which is why it limps. You like knights the most? Ew! Knights are less valuable than popes, though. L for limp. <laughs> L for limp! That's how the knight moves. Yeah, the knight is less valuable than the pope. I like the bi- No, 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 the bishop, 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 the bishop. Knight is less powerful than the bishop. I said bishop, bishop, bishop. The Pope, stop, stop making fun of me! <laughs> Time to change my name. Bishop Francais. When you said Pope, I was like, what? <laughs> I don't know why, but for some reason, I always call the Bishop the Pope. Google and Peasant. Knights are equal to bishops. Occasionally, knights are better, but bishops are more reliable. I know, like, I saw a, um, a, like, questions and answers with Gary Kasparov, who is, um, like, 
a Russian famous chess player. And he said something like, after thousands of computer games, they found that um, bishops generally are more reliable for checkmate than knights are. Um, or like something like, bishops are more involved in checkmates than knights are. And I don't know what that means, but it's something like that. You know, speaking of um, uh, chess, um, and this is maybe a little bit of a tangent, but let, wait, let me just get a quick drink. Um, Y'all ever notice that for some reason every YouTuber is trying to be a boxer nowadays? This sounds a little bit irrelevant to chess, but I saw a tournament of YouTubers playing boxing chess, where like they play chess and then after that they get punched. I don't understand it. But for some reason, every, every, why is it that every YouTuber nowadays wants to be a, um, a boxer? It's like, why are YouTubers becoming more and more obsessed with fighting? Like, I don't understand it. Yeah, what is it? After the Logan Paul versus KSI thing, right? The, the, the YouTuber boxing craze, right? After that, for some reason, like, Everyone was try has been trying to be a boxer. Maybe it's because they saw the amount of success that Logan Paul and KSI got from that and they wanted to ride off of that success. But to be honest, like, as I always say, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm a very like super positive channel. So as, you know, and someone who's like, oh, I want to encourage, you know, kids to pursue um, a happy life. And so I always wonder, is that good? for, you know, young kids to be seeing all their favorite YouTubers going out and saying, um, um, and making, like, boxing popular. Like, don't get me wrong, boxing's a sport, but the way, like, um, what is it, Logan Paul versus KSI did it, they didn't treat it like a sport. It wasn't like a spectator sport. It was a, um, I hate you, Logan Paul, and you hate me, um, KSI, so let's get in the ring and punch each other. So it's like, it's like, yeah, it's a sport, but you know, the way they treat it isn't a sport, right? At the end of the day, when you play, when you do a sport, it's like, okay, boxing in the ring, and then you get out of the ring, and then you're not, there, you're, there's no beef with your opponent. It's just an opponent, right? And uh, it, it blamed Ludwig. What happened to Ludwig? It can be entertainment, a sport, or an art. Like, don't get me wrong. I love freaking, like, I used to love, like, WWE. But it's like W and like, you know, WWE has all these like fake like, oh, I'm going to destroy you in the ring this Sunday or something like that. But Ludwig set up the whole chess boxing. Oh, God. It's like, what is it like nowadays? It almost feels like people are like trying to use boxing or like, you know, any form of like martial art fighting, not as a, you know, as a sport or a exercise, but they're trying to encourage it as a like. Oh, um, as like dealing with like your problems by punching people. It, it, to me, it's not a good thing. WWE is also, also staged. No, you're telling me that a, you're telling me that a TV show that has a leprechaun living under the ring is staged? No, you're telling me that a wrestler that comes back from the dead is staged? No. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, John Armstrong is gay. <laughs> wow, I did not know. <laughs> yeah, but chess boxing to me is just. It's a bit ridiculous. I mean, I guess you can make anything a spectator sport at this point, but um, I don't like to encourage um, beating people up for like your problems, which is kind of what Logan Paul did. At the very least, chess boxing is just, you know, it's, it's still a sport, but I'm afraid that, you know, nowadays with so many people are trying to say like, oh, you go fight. It's like, you know, kids, suffer from contextualization. Uh, I say this a lot. I say the word contextualization a lot because, you know, contextualization is something that we're losing value. 
um, partially because of the internet, right? So kids don't deal with social situations as much anymore. Um, another thing is like COVID has, has us all inside. So we don't talk to each other very much. And like kids are struggling to socialize. And so they see KSI and Logan Paul say, okay, we're gonna box and you know, it, in the overview, it's like, oh, they're doing a sport called boxing. But, you know, lots of kids, they don't have the ability or the, you know, the experience to be able to parse that out. Like boxing, all they see is two people are angry with each other and they punch each other. It's like, yes, there's boxing thrown in, but it's like people are like, oh, it's not a bad influence. It's just sports. It's like, yeah, but also you have to remember that kids don't have the ability to figure out exactly what's going on all the time. It's like, you know, all of a sudden you see chess boxing. It's like, okay, it's set up clearly for entertainment. Clearly, they're probably not going to punch each other that hard. Probably it's going to be more for like fun of the fun of it. Like just to kind of laugh at the fact that two people playing chess are also punching each other. But then you also have, um, but then you'll also have these young kids who are like, oh, let's try chess boxing. And they'll try to set up their own tournament and then they'll, some kid will get knocked in the face and like have to go to the hospital for a concussion. Um, you sound like the people saying video games lead to violence. I know why you're worried, but there's a disconnect. Um, so those are two very different things, actually. Um, video games lead to violence. Uh, let me actually tell you about that study. Okay, um, the study of video games lead to violence is this idea that you can use video games to actually vent your problems. Um, in fact, so um, in, I think it's the 1990s, um, there was a study on that, exactly what you're talking about, uh, Arkane Bold. There was a study on um, video games leading to violence and um, what it was like some Democrat activist group and they were trying to, no, it was some Republican activist group. Back then the Republicans were anti-video games. It was a Republican activist group and they were trying to prove that um, video games lead to violence. What they found was the exact opposite. And so they tried to bury that, um, that, um, uh, that, um, thing. Uh, what am I talking about? They tried to bury that, uh, that, that study, right? They didn't, sorry if I talk slow sometimes, sometimes my brain is just falling apart, but, um, yeah, they tried to bury that study. Like, um, but they found that video games, um, Video games were correlated, uh, I, I'm not gonna say causal because they don't know, but video games are correlated with lower violence, not higher violence. And eventually there were enough psychological studies to show that the reason why video games generally lead to lower violence is because they, um, uh, is because, what is it? They allow people to experience things that um, they normally couldn't like, um, you know, they can, um, instead of venting your anger by punching people, you vent your anger by playing a video game and shooting people in the game. And they found that's actually a very good release for anger. Um, and unfortunately the, the diff, there's a big difference between watching TV and playing video games, playing video games, you're actively doing something. It's for the same reason why um, Power Rangers, kids who watch Power Rangers do participate in violence. I was one of them because um, it's not me, um, you know, participating in the, um, in the activity and therefore it doesn't have the same psychological effect as um, actually participating in the, in, the, um, in the video game, right? You're actively, you know, shooting people in the video game, which allows you to relieve stress or whatever thing they found. Um, watching TV is very different from playing a video game turns out. Um, but yes, corruption moment. They did try to bury that study. Um, but then again, then again, also, I don't, I don't know if chess boxing will lead to violence. I'm only relating, um, I'm only relating it to what I know, which is like, for example, Power Rangers. I know kids try, pretend to be Power Rangers and they're like, we got to beat up the bad guy. And I actually punched my sister a bunch um, when I was like four because I thought she's the bad guy. So I beat her up because I was a Power Ranger. And well, yeah, there we go. You gotta get going. Thank you so much, Randy, for stopping by. Sorry, the conversation got really deep later at the end of the game, at the end of the game, at the end of the stream, but thanks so much for hanging out and hope to see you tomorrow. Basically, video game gives you control and choices while TV, essentially, essentially. I don't know exactly, so I'm not gonna say yes, you're right, but it seems like that's the case. Um, so, but Arcane Bull, I'm not saying that you're wrong, by the way. I don't know. We haven't done the study on this. It could very well be that you're right. 
It's just, I wouldn't relate TV and video games or like entertainment and video games. Like, come on, like a six year old who comes and watches my stream, he's gonna end up being a romantic failure because he's gonna watch me simp and realize that, wow, I should simp for everyone. See, I'm a, I'm a terrible influence. <laughs> Podcast? You guys think I should do a podcast? Uh, I'd run out of topics to talk about very fast, but I'd be happy to like do like a like go on someone else's podcast. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, back in the day, Republicans were very anti-video game, and then now it's become more Democrats who are anti-video game. Republicans are more supportive of video games now, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> I say that only because um, it's like the it was a major Republican group that I think that um, tried to um, establish that video games were evil. I am a terrible influence. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, I better get going. I have to figure out what I want for dinner. Uh, dinner is always difficult for me because I don't know. Food is tough. <laughs> Back what happened. We talked about how video games are corruption and they're going to kill us all. So long story short, play video games. I think it has more with political expedience than party, but yeah. I guess so, yeah. Um, if you, um, if all Republicans believe that video games are evil and you have a study that proves that video games are evil, you're more likely to get support for your Republican ideas, I guess. Yeah, I, fair enough. Yeah, but we discovered that um, uh, video games are evil. Um, uh, um, um, uh, eat your vegetables. Um, that, that, that's pretty much it. Anyway, uh, thanks so much for... <laughs> I don't know. My brain has been messed up since the holidays. So thanks so much for putting up with me, guys. I'm going to get some dinner because I'm hungry AF. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. If you have any quests for me, and I'll see you all next time. Video game bad, veggies good. 